And this episode is brought to you by Dragon Bags. We say it all the time. They made us better throwers. I mean, that is literally conquering the impossible. So if you want to be a world mover, head over to dragonbags.com and get yourself a great set today. They have types for every single type of thrower. So get your hands on some Dragon Bags. Drop code BIGASP12 at checkout and change your game, change your life for the better. Dragonbags.com. To the big ass cornhole show with Sean and Day, the host you know, talking cornhole life and random fun. Grab a beer, let's get it done. All right, welcome back to the big ass cornhole podcast. Sean and Dane are with you as always. What's going on, man? It's really hard to record. Right now. It is. Uh, <laughs> it's actually Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Um, we'll get into why it's Tuesday and while we're recording. Um, but the Guardians game is on the background. It's currently 3-2, to two, heading into the top of the sixth inning. We've been getting hot, slowing down. Game one is forgettable. We'll get into all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so if we seem a little distracted at the time or if you just hear us kind of yell out or start to cheer, you'll know why. Yes. And, oh, yeah. Um, all right. Well, before Besides we get into that, though, Sean, we do have to do a show. We do. We do have to, and we're going to for take the it seriously for the folks listening. All right. So before we get into anything else, Dane, you do it every single week. Let the folks know what we're sipping on tonight in our favorite segment called "What You Drinking." Ho ho! What you drinking? Well, it's uh, just my good luck charm when I'm watching the guards. So it's worked. Drinking Miller. Lite. I didn't want to say anything, but yeah. since you've cracked that beer open, we score two runs. Exactly. Just, you might have to just keep drinking Miller Lite. All right. Ooh. I mean, yeah. Thread me <laughs> with a good time. No. Um, yeah. So just uh, some Miller Lite, but I did want to shout out two breweries that I ventured to this weekend. Okay. Um, one was North yes. Peak Brewing. Have a phenomenal um, diabolical IPA, it's called. Okay. Loved it. And their food is phenomenal. Um, and then another one, Lake Ann Brewing, was just a real small brewery where um, we'll get into it later, but another um, Space Juice IPA was to die for nice. and that was my victory beer during game five. Oh yeah all right folks we have more audio gold plan for you all today um it's gonna be a little bit different episode there's not a whole lot going on in like cornhole competition world a lot of like regionals and stuff like that um but there's been a little bit of drama going on in the cornhole world about a certain bad company we'll touch on that briefly we do have some listener questions and then we have a dramatic reading great stuff oh yes and Love then it. and then we had the privilege and the honor to be joined by the janitor himself, Mr. Matt Wilson. He's an ACL rookie. Um, just an absolute pleasure to have on the show. Yeah. Like just a stand-up dude. And um, I think you guys are really going to enjoy the interview. Um, he was awesome. Sounds like he's ready to clean up. Yep. Um, but before we get into anything else, we're going to let you know what's going on in our cornhole lives in a segment we call In and Around the Hole. you too good for your home? Answer me! So... Um, yeah, you were gone all weekend. Yes. So recap us. While uh, so <laughs> wife and I went to, uh, Traverse city, Michigan. Okay. For our, I thought you guys were at the lake house. No, no, we I went no to, idea. Uh, yeah. Took okay. a little further trip to another lake, um, much larger one, but, um, yeah, Traverse city, Michigan heard I good heard, things. I heard there's some sneaky, good golf resorts up there, um, past several of them. And yes, there are. So that might be a yes. boys. Trip um, I will of. say six hour drive, all of it. Sorry, right. um, but it wasn't bad. That's like, part of the, that's part of the thing. You know exactly, I mean? like, it's part um, of the adventure. So, Traverse City, just uh, fuck, as good as advertised. Wife and I get out there. We stayed in this beautiful loft that was right downtown on the main street. Okay, um, so we could literally walk anywhere um, that we needed to for food, um, drinks, anything. So that was very nice. Went out and saw the dunes, um, like Bear Creek dunes or something like that. Um, Just crazy, breathtaking views out there to go hike and see. I've heard it's beautiful. Um, Yeah, and then the two highlights of the weekend, besides spending time with my wonderful wife, we did have a lovely time. But I got to see grown men cry not once but twice when I was out there. So Saturday, go to uh, Great Anne's Brewing, uh, or Lake Anne's Brewing, I'm sorry, Um, Watching Game Five with Amy there. I'm sorry, you said Great Ann. I can picture as our neighbor. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is Lake Ann. Um, anyways, 
drinking some beers. I wore my inconspicuous Guardians hat um, sitting over here. I'll grab it in a minute, but can't really tell it's a Guardians cap. All right. So I'm just sitting there enjoying the game, just being silent when things are happening bad for us. And this is Saturday? Yes. Okay. And then things start getting good for us and bad for them. And I literally watched a man who was very vocal stand up, rip his shirt in half, and start crying and walk out. So, okay, I was that's way makes way more sense when you tell this now. Yes, because I thought you were in Chautauqua all weekend. No, so I'm like, why were they? Why were you the only Cleveland? I was in in Michigan, surrounded by Detroit fans. Now it makes sense. Then I look over to my left, and the team, the the little table that was talking so much shit, just all sitting there like, thought this was where you. I'm like, you guys just be happy you made it that far, right? All right. You had a magical I'm happy you had a that magical we've made run. it this far. Yep. It was a great series. Take yep. it for what it, it is. It was. It was a great fucking series. It was a great Look game. Look forward to what's moving on. There's no reason for grown men to cry. No. But I then know. on Sunday, there was reason for grown men to cry. I was at the pub when the Aiden Hutchinson ju- uh, injury oh. happened. Dude, it broke my heart, too. And you just literally watched a whole fandom just, I mean, it was Cleveland with Nick Chubb last year. I don't like many things, like especially most sports teams. Yeah. From Michigan in general. Lions, I'll take. Yeah, like, I don't hate the Lions. Like, I never have. I think it's just because, like, they've always been in the NFC. Exactly. You know There's I mean? no like, rivalry always, there. I, I feel for the fan base because, like, I know what we had to put up with. And, like, I think I'm, I hope they do really well because then it gives a glimmer of hope for us yeah. that maybe one day it's going to be our we turn. We could figure it out. Maybe, yeah, you know what I mean? Maybe <laughs> one day the stars are going to align and we're going to just finally figure they this shit out. They almost had it. It's not this year, though. Yeah. What the fuck is going on? Dude, like, I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, we're, we're I wasn't done. even going to bring our it season, up. Our but... season's done. It's done. I want to see enough with Watson. All right. I, our offense has always been successful if we have a pocket passer. All right. So I brought this up at work to some people today. Since Stefanski is going so hard into the paint on Watson, like, he dude, keeps I don't backing think it's him. Stefanski, but okay. But do you think that he also, do, do you think Watson maybe was his guy? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. That was completely done outside. I mean, I'm just speculating. Is there, like, it would, to me, it would be a good reason to think that because then Stefanski wants a guy that's die by that. Listen, you like the athleticism of quarterback. Of course, you'll take it, but you also need a guy that's smart enough to read a defense that can get the ball out in three seconds. Yeah. We can't be running around in the backfield, taking eight sacks a game, holding on to the ball yeah. for seven seconds, and then looking at our offensive line like, why aren't you blocking? Get rid of the motherfucking ball. And meanwhile, on our bench, Anyways, we sorry. have a guy that can get the ball out in three seconds. He's he's not smart about it, but he can get it out in three so seconds. So I think I would love to see Jameis Winston. I I'm think there with you. We just traded away Amari Cooper today. So yes. they are basically phoning in the season. All right. I think the next news will be Nick Chubb is going to Do not. Do not. Do not play Nick Chubb this yeah, year. Yeah, I think Don't. he's just gonna Don't. sit it out. I mean, you already you traded. I mean, what what would you what are you playing? What, are one there, and five. Like, give it up. How, there's not many running backs that have come back from a full year out though, and been very successful. So that would scare me. Yeah, I just think he's different, man. Like, he I is just, different. I think with a, his an demeanor injury as catastrophic, makes me feel is better that, about it. Yeah, yeah. But, and he know. was fairly youthful when it the happened. season's but lost. Exactly, dude. It's just. Um, Garbage. I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch him. But also, I'm still on the flip side, him. Ohio State loses by one to Oregon. Tough. Yep. Dude, great game though. It was, dude, it was a fun game to watch, like, man. And I'm nothing not nothing wrong with that. Both somebody, teams deserve to be where they're at right my now. My last patient today, ratings. super cool dude. He actually went to dental school at Michigan. Like, you know, we're just chopping up back and forth. And uh, he's like, "How'd you like that game?" I'm like, honestly, it was a great game. I'm not gonna be one of the Ohio State fans that's gonna act like, like, oh, we got fucked at at the end of the call. You know, he should have been a dead ball. I don't care. Like. Oregon's a really good team. Yeah. I, if we're going to take a loss, let's do it now. To we almost won in their home turf. Exactly. Like, we're on the road. Two like, versus three. You guys flip-flop positions. And guess what? You can lose two more games probably and still make this playoff. We're, so, yeah, like, we're still going to be in the playoffs. We're going to be fine. The only thing I don't want to see happen, we can't let Oregon win the Big Ten Championship the first year. The first year? year? You know. can't. You can't I let know. that happen. Like That would just that be, would be rough. Look. It would be a very bad look. Um, so this weekend, speaking of the Guardians, I actually went to that game, game five, that was making the grown men cry. Dude, and you recorded the perfect moment. <laughs> okay, so it was a very stressful game, like the entire game. 
you could just felt like the the tension and like the crowd was loud and everything. But as soon as Detroit went one up up one nothing, it just deflated. Like you could just feel everyone in Cleveland was like same old shit. Yep, you know, we're gonna blow it. We had a great run. Like and of course, you know, it's just it has not to our be season. Detroit. I yes, I mean that's like, just the other part of it. Yeah. But then I don't know why. Like we got we tied it up. They hit uh, J Ram right. Uh, is that staying in? Stay in off the wall. Uh, so they hit J Ram. We score. Bases are loaded, and I don't know why. I just had this weird feeling something was good. I didn't know he was going to hit a home run. Yeah. But I just thought like something good's going to happen, and the crowd's going to go nuts. We're going to take the lead. I just want to have the crowd reaction on it, and it just happened to be the 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 pitch that he hit the grand slam on, which is it was only overshadowed by the fact that Donovan Mitchell also live streamed. Yeah, I know <laughs> that's right. exact moment as well, but <laughs> it was it's awesome when crazy. he sent me that video. I'm like, yeah. man, that's bananas. Um, so the game was awesome. It's probably that the moment after the home run was probably the second loudest I've ever heard the stadium be first loudest was another game playoff game. I was at with when Frankie Lindor hit his game winner. Funny that enough, was though, nuts. I was the exact opposite. I was in the quietest bar I had ever heard in my life when that it's happened. It's kind of awesome. Isn't that nuts? Yeah. <laughs> You could hear a pin drop in that oh, place yeah. in me while I'm just like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knew I was a guards fan there. I mean, but I if did, you're not I being obnoxious, little... you can cheer for your team. Exactly. You know I mean? yeah. Just don't be obnoxious about but it. But the one dude behind me just like it was irking him a bit and I could tell. So I want you was... guys to notice I'm saying nice things about Michigan now. Okay. Yes. Just remember that for like when we get to dramatic reading section. Yeah. All right. For sure. Um I went to so after the Guardians game. My aunt and uncle, um, they live on the east side of Cleveland. My uncle's Jewish. They watch our kids quite a bit. They help us out. They were having, I believe it was Yom Kippur was this weekend. Let me let me just pull it up just on, fact the old, check that, uh, on the calendar real quick. Um, so they have a, a like a basically party, right? So they have a bunch of their friends over. The, they have a bunch of food, and they had the Ohio State game it on. It was Yom Boom. Kippur, sure. So a big deal Good in their uh, in their culture. So we decided, like, we got to go over there. So we yeah. went over at, like, 630 at night. And I got to tell you, we had a blast. Like, my kids didn't bother us once because my cousin Darby was there and she's like 26, 27 and my kid and she just took care of the kids. Yeah. Like I had like nothing but she's like, like just, a child. She's like a toddler whisperer. I got to though. my me and my wife just got to sit there and chop it up with like older like Jewish couples who just love to gossip and like any you know what I mean like and they just love to shoot the shit on oh, one liners just all some, day. Dude, I just was eating stuff and the food, Dane, the food Told you. was so good. Like alone was worth the price of admission right there. Yeah. Like that, that was, it was so freaking good. There was a reason why the men in that family look the way they do. And my wife was in a good mood because yeah. on Thursday night we went out to dinner with friends. Mm-hmm. I had to, so my wife left, uh, she, t- uh, she, t- uh, on Thursday, she left from school and she met her friends out at the bar yeah. and she called me. She's like, Hey, um, don't come straight from work, drive home first. And then can you like Uber out like to meet us? And I'm like, why? And she's like, I can't drive. Like I'm like, I cannot, there's no way I can drive. I'm like, Oh, okay. So I drove us that night, Saturday night, get my food, just finishing it up. David's like, I bought some bourbon when I was in Cape Cod. He's like, it's supposed to be like one of the, you know, top, like lower price. Bur-. He's like, you want to try some? And I like, look at Val and she's like, go ahead. She's like, I'll drive us home. I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'm like, and uh, he's always poor. I'm like, give me two, next, give me three fingers. Like, we're, we're good. Throw and I'm like, I was like, Still driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> um, and then Sunday we just did family stuff. Uh, took the kids to like uh, Berea, the city that we live in, has like a fall festival, like Halloween yeah. festival. They Went do a, there. They do a really nice job too. They do. Yeah, like a bunch of like local companies. So I think next year we vol- they were begging for volunteers, like local companies. Yeah, we need to go up there and do it. Yeah, for we'll sure. We'll bring our we'll bring the little ass bar. We'll set it up right there and just pass out candy to little kids. We'll come up with costumes and stuff. I think it would be like easy promotion. Do we get enough I mean? space to set up boards? We could, I mean, depending on if we pick the right spot. Yeah, we probably could. Um, The one observation I have, and like, I'm not a huge, like, diehard Halloween guy. I'm just not. He's out. There you go. That was a nice play. Huge, Nice little pick off on second base. I'm sorry, but we pick off more people than anyone else in the MLB. I love it. And he thought, he tried to reach his hand around, but I don't think he actually got to the base in time. Oh, the old reach around, eh? Buy me dinner first. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I, again, going back to it, sorry, not to get off tangent here. Um, I, I'm not a huge Halloween person, Yeah, but I noticed that like, why is it that it just seems like, I can't, I don't know if this is going to sound really mean. It just seems like the people that love Halloween just tend to be a little trashier. Is that fair to say? Sure. 
Like you Sean, you're entitled to your opinion. We live in a neighborhood that I love because you get all walks of life. You know what I mean? You have people that do very well yeah. and you, and we're very close to like part of like Cleveland and Brook park that like, they don't have like, you know, big houses, you know, it's like lower middle class kind of thing. And it's just like, so we get a good blending of everyone. And it's just like, it just, I feel like it's just like a, if you're trashy, you love Halloween. Yeah. I mean, I love Halloween. I got a little, little house. I'm not, I mean, I, I read I'm writing on the wall here, Sean. Just, if you would have seen right. it, you would have known. Sean, what, guess what? My, my lawn is well manicured. You too, did go as okay? Joe Dirt one year. I did. That was a great costume. That was a great costume. Got overshadowed by our Ninja Turtles that year, but. It's pretty good. I think it was I mean, coming up with for, it. Like, like I walk in the house, like you want to go to a Halloween party? And yeah, like, uh, like, uh, sure. <laughs> I happen to have a mullet wig. Because <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not? Why not? Um, all right, he was obviously out, right? I mean, I still? don't know. I mean, he was called out on the field. I don't know what they're seeing that we're not. I mean, they showed before like, his hand gets on the field. He's already he's already touching chest. his chest. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, why are we still? But anyways. At this? <laughs> and, and he's down out there. Yeah. Yeah. He's out. I mean, he's been out for 10 minutes now. Like, what are we doing? All right. Um, it's, you know why? Cause the replay booth is in New York. Okay. You know, so it's got to travel further. Okay. Cause they're in New York. Right. Very now. true. Very <laughs> true. Um, so not a whole lot going on in the cornhole world. Not really. No. I mean, um, I saw like the ACL started dropping some stuff about like their draft grades that were like, if anyone had said that we were soft on draft grades, like, I mean, it was like powder cup. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it just seriously, ridiculously soft. Like, some of the draft grades, like, they were giving, like, a C plus. Like, what? Really? Like, oh. Yeah, I threw a D in there. Yeah. Come I on, mean, no. Like, was, I, still, I thought everyone did okay. Yeah, like, so we're going to combine all of our, like, draft ratings and rankings and stuff like that. We'll start posting that stuff up. Yeah. Um, next week, we're going to talk about, like, power rankings. Yeah. But there wasn't a whole lot of, like, tournament stuff going on. There were a lot of local regionals. Um, our guest later on in the episode, Matt Wilson, you'll hear how he won his singles um, at the local regional mm-hmm. in North Carolina or I'm uh, sorry, South Carolina, South Rock Carolina. Hill. Yeah. Um, so it's just it's it was kind of like this weird content week. And then out of nowhere, a, a glorious post was posted up on Addicted to Cornhole that so was sent to me by you, a few people. You were saying that this was the uh, the bad company stirring up trouble or something again. What, what Alter do now? No, it wasn't actually all true. <laughs> so I, there was this long post about how a guy that was VP of sales um, was claiming that he made an offer to purchase Black Sheep Baggers and they rejected his offer and then they fired him, right? So that was basically the gist of it. Yeah. And they owed him some money um, for credit that he had, like $1,500 or something, and he just wanted the general public to know. I didn't really care didn't really bother me yeah what bothered me was that that post was taken down immediately like almost immediately like within probably 10 minutes it was taken down from uh, from addicted to cornhole i couldn't find it anywhere i had other people hey can you find this like do you yeah. know where can you search this like maybe it's just not coming up on mine nothing um oh shit oh, scored another one all right so was it four two sure is four two all right fuck me um fuck me sad. But yeah, I couldn't find the post. So I had screenshots of the of the original post. Fucking Rizzo. So Can I just do. decided to repost it on Addicted to Cornhole saying like, why are we deleting this post? Like, and I was honestly, I was just kind of weird. Like it was, why would this post delete it? Like yeah. I didn't, like, yes, it was like defamatory in some nature, but of all the stuff that's said and written on Addicted to Cornhole, that's the one that you're going to be like, no, that's yeah, it. That's, so I just thought it was weird. Draw the line. My post was up for maybe five minutes, right? But it was doing very well. It had like 50 likes, 20 comments on it was rolling through. Gone. Yeah. What? So I posted it up again. <laughs> like, I'm like, what's going on here? Keep it going, buddy. So I started reaching out to some of the administrators for Addicted to Cornhole page. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, who is deleting my posts? Like, I didn't swear in any of the posts. Like, I know, like, the flag stuff that if you post, like, it could come down. Like, if you swear or use certain trigger words yeah but i did i did i just i still to this i to the like right now i don't know what happened they're all denying that anything was ever deleted they're saying it was something from facebook like that made no zero sense okay yeah like you know what i mean like i just i don't buy it completely um but 
it is what it is. I think addicted to cornhole where changes are going to be coming to this forum. I think a lot of the bigger forums and social media are kind of getting hip to this idea of like, Oh, this is a lot of work to moderate these pages. Like, why aren't we monetizing? Yeah. You know what I mean, so I think we're going to start seeing like, like subscription. subscription based. Yeah, I, I really do. I think that's uh, cool. when are we going to do that for big ass cornhole? Never. I mean, we do it right now on Patreon. We oh, that's love it. True. But that's, a, that, that's to like our fun spot though. Yeah, that's true. We can get away with anything. There. Correct. Um, Try and stop these. So I, I've, I, I do want to say that the original post itself, the new co-owner-ish, so it's some owners f- reached out to me from Black Sheep Bagger and said, it's not true. They're going to be coming back. Um, they're not really sure. Like, and he, They're claiming that he only made them an offer of $10,000 to buy the company. In his post, it made it sound like he offered somewhere in the range of forty five to sixty thousand. Um, so I asked that guy that made the original post, "Did you offer them ten thousand? And he asked his next follow up question was like, "Who did you hear that from?" And I'm like, "That's not that's not the, <laughs> like the answer I was really looking for." So once that was the response, I'm like, "You know what? All right." So I don't know what actually happened. I don't really give a fucking shit. Um, it is what it is. Like I know Black Sheep Baggers is we were sponsored by them last year. I don't know what happened. Like one half of their ownership just disappeared. Like just wa- just di- you know sold his half and was out. And he was our main yeah. contact. Um, I know Alex is the owner of it now. I don't really know Alex very well um, at all. So I mean, good luck. I I don't I I I'm actually kind of surprised that they're still going because. I'm pretty sure Alpha Bags used to make their stuff. I'm pretty sure. And I'm pretty sure I also saw that Alpha Bags is no longer, which again, kind of goes to the random conspiracy. Like why would you, if you're Alpha, why would you pay for a ACL stamp this year? Yeah. And then close then like close. before the, I mean really like as the season starting, like that makes zero sense to me. So you're just willing to throw the money away, I guess. Right. That's what it sounds like to me. Yeah. So, like, I'm assuming their that portion is closed. But if Black Sheet's up, that means they must. I'm assuming they might have found someone else to make it because, like, I don't think they manufacture their own bags. But now the question also remains for Alpha: like, maybe they're just trying to sell because maybe. they do have those licenses. So, yeah, they could, could be. just be trying to make a move that way. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows, man? This world with these bags and can we all just go back to corn? Just a, just a little bit of corn. Just All good right. old corn So we had bag. a few listener questions. So let me pull those up real quick. <clears throat> All right. So uh, two end cornhole. We do you remember the bags? We reviewed bags did, from two yeah. end cornhole quite a while ago. The one had the moose on it, I believe. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, with all the different golf clubs, like mm-hmm. the driver, putter. Yep. Um, is it possible to have a live match between both of you? So ironically, this weekend. Yeah. We're going to the Cleveland Regional. Mm-hmm. It is going to be your boy's first regional in eight months, I want to say. Man. So I have thrown, I think, I, I threw some in Spencer's, um, and I threw at a TCL event last year, and then I think one regional, and that's about all I played last year. So I'm excited to go. I haven't gotten an opportunity to go to like a big tournament and actually throw and not like get content. Yeah. We're going to get some content. I think... We have to make the people happy. Got to make me happy. So what I'm asking is, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a standard game to 21, or do you want to do something like a skins match? Um, I was thinking, let's uh, let's try our game. First bag can't go in. First bag can't go in. I don't know if I'm. I would be fine with that, but if I was throwing somewhat regularly, but. <laughs> See, I know you're kryptonite right yeah, exactly. off the rip, yeah. <laughs> but like I think we could do a standard, or I think uh, skins would be. Yeah, I mean, so we can figure it out when when we're out there. Okay, but yes, we will be. Uh, we're going to record that. Uh, we'll and obviously chop it up and be shorter videos. But then, uh, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's where we typically post like longer form videos and stuff like that. So check out YouTube, the YouTube's big ass cornhole right on there. Maybe we'll post a link to it. Yeah, you never know. Um, let's see. Find the one I was looking for. Okay. I love this question so much. And sure. Brian Schurmeister, you like you're near and dear to my heart right now. Cause like, uh, this was such a good question. And I think it's for an episode that we don't have a whole lot of cornhole content. I think it's like perfect. Yeah. With Netflix making series like quarterback receiver and starting five, 
who would be the five players if they were to do an ACL season? And what would you call it? I, I don't. You can't say, call it cornholer. No. It's like every porn site would probably pick it up. So, like the golf one is swing. Let's call it throw. Chuck. <laughs> Hut corn. Oh my god, what is going on here? We're just, just playing little league baseball right now. That's what's going on. So, is there anyone like right off the bat that you okay? So you gotta think if we're let's let's pretend that goes over really well. So yeah. this is the first season that first, we're doing. Very it. first season. So I think just because it's the very first season, I think you almost have to put Matt Guy as one of those guys, one of the people in the in the film, if you're picking five. Yeah, I think you. I think it's important to kind of hit all the age ranges. Yeah, because you, you want to go down correct. Like, I think <clears throat> either Matt Guy or Damon Dennis. Yeah, I think, I think either one could work out. Matt Guy that. being known as the goat, I think it's kind of important to have him in. Yeah. that first film. I agree. All right, so hold on, so wait. I'm gonna write these down because I want to do a, a graphic to this later. Matt Guy, two, three. All right, so who else are you thinking? I think like, again, I think if if you're checking the boxes for demographics, right. You have to go like somebody older. So now I'm thinking like who would be the young, at least one of the young guns you would want. I mean, Braden Wilson's so freaking personable. Yeah. Like he just seems like he would just eat something like that up. And I think you kind of have to treat it like young gun with success and then maybe young rookie as well. Just so, because the young talent is so prominent. So I guess if we, I guess my question would be, is the documentary was it already done and we're picking five players that they would have followed last year or are we picking five players? We're going to start recording like for this season and we're going to release a documentary next yeah, year. I think we're releasing the documentary next, next year. year. Okay. Yeah. Then if that's the case, I think you have to go Jeremiah Ellis as one of them. Yes. You know, cause you're talking about like you've won back to back champions, rookie of the year, MVP. You know what I mean? Like you have to have him in there. Yeah. All right. So Ellis, And you have to spread the love, but keep like the same talent level. And I think you need to have that Jamie Graham rivalry in there. I think that could be part of it, but I don't think yeah. Jamie Graham would be the necessarily. But a feature, I also think a good feature could be Jacob Trusinski. He was definitely. Yes, I think he could definitely be on the list. Captivating kind of. Can I make a sales pitch if I was doing a marketing pitch? Sure. Because I think again, you want a junior on there. Yeah. I think that I think it would be cool to have a junior, but then you also you you want it to be diverse, but you also want to have like a teams aspect. Like you want partners on at least so you can kind of mesh some of these episodes together. I think you have Braden Wilson, AJ Sims. I do like that. Right. I think that like those two would just be so interesting. Weird dynamic, yeah, man, but it it's works great. so well. And AJ um, Sims is so well spoken. He's marketable. I mean, and... The other one I thought was Smith Wiedenfeld, but Wilson Sims, I think you might get a little more out of them. I think I feel like Sims' home life is just more interesting. For sure. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Dad like of a... don't get me wrong. Like I think Ryan Smith, like having like the sports background, yeah. it'd be good, but like He's like a project manager. Yeah. Meanwhile, you got AJ Sims who just like. What does he have like eight kids? I don't know how he has enough time in the day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, I just feel like that would work very well. So my list right now would be Matt Guy, Jeremiah Ellis, Brayden Wilson, AJ Sims. And I'm trying to pick my my last one as like a wild card. I'm trying to think what do I need? Do I need somebody that's like, like just really out there? Do we need just like a normal dude? Like or do we need? Do we want to like? Do we do another like popular guy? I mean, I think there would be like some fun room for like a curveball in there, like somebody I that's just you, like, hey, you can show the every every man, you know. I, I think so, but I think Matt Guy kind of represents that a little bit. I was thinking along the lines of there's this whole crop of like younger players like Jacob Trzinski that are playing cornhole professionally. Yeah, we don't have any of those guys down here yet. I because you got Jeremiah Ellis is another working man yeah. who just happens to be a killer. Matt Guy. And then you have the younger guy with Braden Wilson. You have the dynamic with AJ Sims. I feel like we just need one of those guys that like is it Tony Smith? No. It could be Tony. Um is it Mark Richards? Now I'm also thinking, have we have we heard enough from Jeremiah Ellis to include him in this? Could we possibly exclude him? No. Since he's another working man. 
and find no again i'm thinking storylines yeah he's again you have to have the reigning mvp rookie of the year one, the first player ever to win back-to-back nationals and single you know what i mean like you could you could make an argument that you'd have trey birchfield in there but I don't think Trey's personality in a documentary like this is going to come through as much as somebody like Jeremiah, yeah. who's very naturally outgoing. I worry about the same thing with Tony Smith. I think another storyline you could go with, he just went professional, didn't have a great year last year, but he plays with Tony Smith. I think Mark Richards makes sense. Richards yeah. could be good. You know what would be actually a great... The storyline's because he sucked kind of last year, and he's trying to figure it out, and he's dealing... You know what I mean? It's like he wants to be... He was former number one. He wants to get back up there. When you want to talk about storylines, let's get Chad White Boy Hunt on there. That would be wild. Right? Yeah. Love Chad. Like, that would be... That would be dynamic. All right. I'm going to put Richards on mine. Loser. You can put who <laughs> he wants, White Boy Hunt. <laughs> so what is your list, then? So I, I, I got to agree with you on that guy. Okay. Just because the That's inaugural so season, you got to have the goat on there. Um, and you know what? I'm going to, I'll steer away from Ellis. Okay. All right, we're going to steer the ship away. Okay. Give me Straczynski. Okay. And then we want another like common man that we know that could carry the screen, maybe lesser known, but kind of gives me like what Kirk Cousins would bring to the table. Okay, yeah. Give me Hoffman. <laughs> Yeah, I dude, right? I he was the other way. If I didn't I go like, with Richards, yeah, I just Hoffman think like he's be, well yeah. spoken. I think he could be really entertaining, and like like I said, just you wouldn't expect him to be a pro athlete, but there he is. Listen, he may has a cool story because he was like the last guy in singles that qualified. Exactly, he beat Mark Richards again. And the this is his spot. grind back yeah. into you yeah, know, exactly. trying to become a top one hundred. Yeah, and like, he's a dad, and you know what I mean, exactly. like yeah, yeah. Like, no, I, I do like I that like story that one. a lot. Um, and then I'm, I'm gonna go junior, but I'll go. With, the junior with slightly more success in trader. Okay. Um, just because I think you get a two for one too. Cause you also have his younger brother there. Well, you do. And I, I do agree with that. And again, you have the storyline of like, he was really successful. They changed the rules this year yeah. and he can't step. Is he going to be as su- successful? I think that's a very smart pick too. And then the last one, I mean, I think the kid's going to have a camera behind him the whole time, but I'd go cash. Go somebody that young, like just, Trying to go into the into the world of pro cornhole, see what it's see what it's like. Yeah, I I don't disagree. I think if they were if like you were gonna make like an episode, if you weren't just picking five people, but you're gonna have like a junior's episode, like he, he would could definitely be a feature. Yeah. I don't it know if he would to like carry hold, yeah. like the whole way through. All right, let me let me reverse. Again, that, you but. can pick him if you want. I'm not trying to change. Your yeah, pick. but again, he might be too young. I'm just being a producer. Here, I know. So. I, I think he might be too young though. Um, you know, shift again. Give me. Okay, we have done something very wrong, by the way. We have no female representation. <laughs> I feel like we need to have some female representation. So then as I'm well. going to go ahead and go with Gina Ramirez. So can we pick six? Yeah. Right? We'll, we'll take a female in there. Because, like, we'll say it's a eight part documentary yeah, or I mean, seven I love, part documentary. Uh, All right, I'm doing six. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Cheyenne's story, but give me Gina. Okay. Like, I, I think her story's dynamic too. And, All right. Uh, I'm trying not to double up on anyone that you yeah. have. Then last but not least, um, I'll close it out with, you know what, who, who actually has been involved in Cornhole and has an interesting story? Tanner Halpert. Tanner Halpert? Yeah. Okay. I think Tanner could, could carry a lot of that because he approaches it differently. A wife that works with the ACL, he's got to literally live Cornhole day in, day out. So who do I with want a family? the female player to be? Cheyenne would be the easy one um, yeah. just because she's been so dominant. Like it'd be a very easy storyline. Selfishly. I've seen enough commercials about it. You know what I mean? Like they talk about it all the time. Like yeah. I want to give, I want to give the light to somebody else. Um, I think Sarah Cassidy is interesting one because you know, like she, I don't know if she still does, but I know she was like a manager at Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. She's been a cornhole pro. She's a gamer. You know what I mean? She's kind of quirky. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of an option. Um, I think Miranda Coy has an interesting storyline. You know what I mean? Like being a musician, is that going out? No. Oh. Okay. Um, man, who? Rosie Streaker is another one. You know what I mean? Like she's been there, done that. You know what I mean? Like you can go with like Belvin. Yeah. New mom approaching the game. Yeah. Became the A1 cornhole player in the household. Like. 
Yeah, because then you get some Noah Wooten exposure exactly, too. Like... Yeah. I just, again, I don't know Cameron Belvin at all. I'm sure she she's probably a very sweet. I just don't know her. So, yeah. like, personality wise, man, I think, honestly, I'm going to go coy. And here's the reason why. Because I you'll hear our answers about villains later. Yeah. And I, think and I feel like she could play a villain role. Um, and I feel like if you kind of talk that up and, like, she's like, up and coming, you know, she's one tournament. She just, just needs to get over that hump, mm-hmm. but she could be very dominant in the women's division. So yeah, I'll go Koi. And I she's like a it. proud team, big ass member. So that she is. Hell yeah! All right, I think it's time. In a world where being bags have brought men to their knees, social media serves as sanctuary for keyboard warriors. Time for the dramatic readings. So this was actually a response to um, a simple picture. All I, and all the posts said was Roll Tribe, and it had a picture of a cartoon tiger crying. That's yes. it. Very tasteful, I thought. Yeah. As a, just a subtle, like, hey, we won, but I'm not going to rub it in your face too much. So anyways, this is by Bacon Kevin. Bro, who are you, and why are you on our balls up here in Michigan? Sounds like your podcast is like two followers who think, and you think your opinion matters. I bet you're from the depths of some middle class family who takes care of the grass. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, I'm trying to decide how hard in the paint I want to go. Know, can you guys feel his anger through the microphones? When I read this, I'm like, who? For I, I almost reached out to a bunch of people like that I know, like in the Michigan area, to be like, can, does that, can anyone vouch for this guy? Because if they can vouch for him, all right, maybe I just, I'll just let it go. But like, then I'm like, no, no, like, don't, don't come on my fucking page and comment some bullshit that you know nothing about. And then try to insult me about some middle class, like grass cutting bullshit. Who did you were from Davidson, Michigan? I, I'm sorry. Are you some like upper class motherfucker? Like, no, you're a piece of shit. You have, you're the quintessential. And oh, guess what? He's single. So that's a fucking shocker. He's a quintessential. <laughs> your Facebook profile picture is you taking a selfie and you can see your eyes looking down because you're trying to press the button. Like, you're not cool either. Like, we have more than two followers, though, by the way. So, like, just barely. Yeah, our mom listens too and we follow it. So but first of all, three. if you're like, how are you even fucking? I'm not up on your fucking balls about shit. I didn't say anything about this. All I said was roll tribe. That's it. And then I posted one fucking picture yeah. because we have a lot of fans and people that listen to the show and friends in Michigan that we like to give shit to. Now, Sean, he he might just be a diehard Detroit fan. He's a fucking loser. And was just and a first little of all, too angry. Bacon Kevin. Like, is your name actually Kevin Bacon? Because if it is, that's like, first of all, hilarious. But you're a loser that you can't even put your name correct. And if your first name's Bacon, you should have probably just killed yourself already. No, no, no. Bacon's a great first name. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bacon. But like, don't don't do that shit. Like, like it was a harmless post. I didn't rub it in, and I had already commented on several other comments. Like, it was a great series. Like, yeah, I was I genuinely mean, thinking that we were gonna lose, and I didn't want. To, obviously, I want the Guardians to win, but like, I wasn't like rah rah in anybody's face. We weren't talking shit to anybody. Yeah, but for the record, my lawn is well manicured. Thank it, you. It is okay. I do care about my lawn. And is this supposed to be like some insult about being like in the middle class? Like I. Proudly, like yeah, where I never claim not to be. I don't know if you're class. not in the middle class, do you not have to mow lawn? Ever? Yeah, wait, like, yeah. What am I missing out on something? Like, yeah. Do we miss that? Is that only a middle class I mean, thing? You could you could still own a home and not be middle class and have a yard, but hey, you know, it's just it's shit like that that most of the time I don't read. Like I really do, just like post and ghost. But like that hit me so, and I was in already in kind of like a shitty mood. Yeah. So I I responded, I, and I do you have no many I, how many times I had something typed out and I deleted it, and whatever I ended up with was about the nicest I could come up. I'd probably with. say like at least fifteen times. I saw it took you a while to post oh, back. So I like, yes. I'm sure I, you were stewing. And you're like, no, don't don't, don't post it. it. <laughs> just read it, read it. Okay, you feel better? No, not yet. All right, type something else out. Um, yeah, I, I, just, I just still I don't like understand the, I also just don't understand the slight still like, now. Like, listen, if it was a Yankees fan, I, I would completely get it. You know what I mean? Like yes. I would almost expect that shit from you, but like, I mean, I, we've public, I've said before, like I, I have nothing against Detroit. Like I don't like t- the Tigers because they're a division rival, yeah. but like, I hate Michigan, but like, I'll give you the lions. Like I'll, I'm okay. Sure. I felt really bad about Hutchinson, Yeah, but forever. Fuck the tigers. Yeah. I will never, <laughs> I will never root for the tigers. They but baking Kevin, I, prom- I promise you, I promise you 
you do not want to do this. Okay. So do not comment. Don't come back with anything because I, I will just, I, I will go use my full wrath of social media skills and I will just take you down a peg. So let's just get over that. Okay. Whoa. And uh, good luck next season. Peggy might be what he wanted. Hell yeah. I might be single. Yep. All right. Cue the rap horn. Let's do it. I guess so. That was a short rant. We just at Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Ass Cornhole. And Facebook at Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. And thanks to our sponsor, Dragon Bags. Best bags in all the land. Sure are. Head over to dragonbags.com. Drop code Big Ass 12 at checkout. Save yourself some money. Sure might. Um, Patreon. If you've heard of Patreon, um, it's where basically we post bonus stuff. So if you're looking for extra content, you want to support the show, we start off on different tiers, but for the price of a beer a month, you can come and get bonus content. We're going to be having a happy hour this Friday. So just if you're ever interested, if you haven't attended a happy hour yet and you're a Patreon member, you, you got to hop on a call, man. Like yes, they're, they're fun. Yeah. So we're going to do it on a Friday night because, you know, we usually do it Sunday or Monday nights and it's hard for people to attend. So Friday night, we're going to hop on, we're going to do a little happy hour call. They're always fun. You never really know what's going to happen. And uh, I'll probably go on a little bit more of a rant about all this shit, but I mean, get a, get a couple of beers in here. What are, what's going to be our nectar of choice? I don't know. What are we going to sip on? I don't know. I'll try to, I'll try to look for something tomorrow. Okay. Cause it'll be tough when my wife's out of town this weekend. She's going to California. So California, she's going to Oakland, which is not a great area. So I'm like not super time thrilled that she's going there by herself. And then she's like, well, I have time to kill. Like I have like all day on Sunday. So I'm going to like go see the golden state gate bridge and like go check out San Francisco. I'm like, just don't be walking around by yourself. Yeah. Like San Francisco is not like a super safe city. So, um, but I know she's excited to go. So I'm excited for it, but you were just, just there. me and the kids. She let you go. So it's Sean. funny. Cause like my kids like look at me, they're like, mom's going away for a few days. I'm like, I know they're like, are we going to be okay? Yeah, like, are we good? <laughs> are we like, going to make it? Shut up. Just go to bed. We're fine. Okay. Don't talk. Don't tell your mom that. All right. I'm but, happy I gave Nora my cell phone. Number, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> Did you see the, uh, to be a random stuff. Did you see the fire that was like at the top of my street today? No, I didn't drive down. That my son is basically obsessed with anything. Police officers and firefighters. Like that's all he ever wants to do and see and whatever. We're getting back from Nora's, uh, parent teacher conference today. Yeah. And we see like just smoke billowing out of this house and about four full fire engines and everyone just, yeah. Dousing. That one right at the corner. So yeah, it's that small duplex on the same side of the street as me on the corner of race and Edgewood. Okay. All right. Yeah. I know what I'm saying. Yeah. About, like yeah. the little, yeah, little white one. Um, yeah. So the, the, my son put on a snow hat, put on his winter jacket, his boots and was just standing out there just watching him. <laughs> I had to find so your tell- neighbor's pain was his gain. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he was like balls to the wall. Cause like a police officer drive by wave, like they roll down his window and like wave to him stuff. Fuck yeah. He's like, yeah. Like every firefighter Buddy. walked by, they wave at him. I'm like, oh, Hey, like they're trying to work, man. Like, just, come on. There goes a savage. fire there. I know. I'm like, can we not celebrate right now? Like somebody just lost a lot of stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's like, it's sure. will cover it. It's yeah, fine. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. But other than that, I don't really have a whole lot. Well, what so an episode, man. Next week, we're going to go, um, we've already like done the whole the uh, ACL draft stuff. Uh, we're going to upgrade. We're either going to do the, Ste- I think we're going to wait for the way too early Stevie Awards. Okay. But I think we're going to go update our power rankings after, you know, the first open of the season, just kind of reevaluating where everyone's at and then yeah. kind of getting ready for that following week, which is then I think open number two. Isn't open number two this weekend? Is it this weekend? I think it is. Oh, okay. I didn't think it was. I thought because the regional stuff, I thought there was the uh, the following weekend was the next one. No, I could be I could be I very wrong. This weekend. Okay, you could be right. So, um, but hope you guys have a good week. Um, hope you guys enjoy the interview. Yes. Matt Wilson joined us. It was an absolute killer interview. Um, if you're on Patreon, like you said before, um, you could have seen it already. We posted the live interview a day early. But um, if you haven't heard it, you're gonna really enjoy it. He's a super interesting, dude. You hear about how we came, um, how the nickname was the given. janitor. Yeah, um, just what he does for a living. Just a really down-to-earth guy. We had a lot of fun with it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Loved it. Well, we'll be back next week. But as always, we hope you throw it straight. And it's nothing but four baggers from here on out. Cornhole it. Later. Welcome back to the Big Ass Cornhole Podcast. We are now joined by ACL rookie, Mr. Matt Wilson. What's going on, man? What's up, guys? How you doing? Good, man. It's been a long time coming. It's like 
we were talking before we started recording. You've kind of been like on my radar for a guest that like I wanted to have on. Um, so welcome. And like, I don't know anything about you. So I'm kind of excited to find out a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys having me. I'm, I'm excited too. been, been listening to you guys for a while. So, uh, love the content. Thanks, man. Um, all right. So let's start off. Like, let's start off with the grassroots stuff. Like, let's get your background. Like, where are you from? Like, how did you okay. find yourself into this? Like, what do you do for a living? Just kind of give us a little biography here. Sure. Um, so I, I am born and raised in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I went to Clemson University and sorry. studied uh, engineering. Okay. Now, now I'm a structural engineer and I've been designing bridges for like 10 years. That's cool. Um, and that's kind of like my my main source of income. Okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but Cornhole was... Has and has always been for me a, a tailgating, drinking, fun game. Okay, you know, um, it was always fall football season. The roommates were out there playing. We were terrible. Um, we were never spinning the bag. We were just balling it up, bunching it. You know, having a good time. And if we got one in the hole, it was like, hey, uh, we're the best out there. <laughs> yes. So it it was fun. Uh, um, so. I mean, as far as like how I got into cornhole was it's, it's always been a tailgating game for me, but about five or six years ago, it is when I first joined the ACL and started to play like competitively. Okay. Um, and I joined, uh, in the competitive division and I was like, I don't think they had the PPR tracker then, but like, I, if I had to guess, I was probably throwing like a seven PPR. Okay. Um, and I heard, I remember going to like one of my first regionals and just getting Owen to every single time by like Derek Holland and, and Josh Holland and like Eric Ryder and like all these guys that were just, I mean, <laughs> demoralizing me. Um, and I was like, what am I doing? I mean, I, I saw them play on TV one time and that's what made me want to join it. And I was like, I, I'm going to be on TV one day. I'm definitely going to do it. And uh, it was, it was hard. I mean, for, for these, those first three, three years, but just kept going at it and decided to practice a little bit more. And now kind of I'm here. I mean, so like what, what's practice to you? Like, are you, uh, you'll, you'll practice independently, like just solo. Do you like just go into blind draws? Cause everyone's a little bit different. It seems like. Yeah. I definitely get my best practice when I'm throwing by myself in my driveway. Okay. Um, cause I'll stay out there for, I'd say like right now, I probably am out there three times a week for call it a little over an hour. Um, and then I'll go to a blind draw once a week and then a tournament almost every weekend. Okay. Um, and it works for me. Cause like whenever I'm practicing out in my driveway, I'm just constantly fixing mistakes. You know, I'm like, Oh, why did I miss that? I'll change it. You know? And so it's, it's like, I can do that and throw thousands of bags. When I go to a tournament, I might go one and two or two and two. And I didn't throw that much. You know, are you like a scenario guy when you're throwing by yourself? Do you set up bags on the board to try to practice a certain shot? Or are you just a, I'm going to throw four bags. And my goal is just to get them all four in. Like I always start off with like like five to 10 rounds of just making sure my bag flight is correct. Okay. I don't even care what the result is. Okay. I just want to get that flat bag. And then once I've got that feel, then I usually transition into um, a, a game where I'm playing, you know, eight bags and I'm playing it as if I would normally do that. I'll usually do that one, one game. And then I'll kind of look back at how that game went, like which shots I really struggled with. Like if it was my role was not hidden, then I would practice roll bags for like five rounds Okay. and just do that. And, and usually by that time, it's kind of like 45 minutes and then I'll play one more game and then that's it. So you just like playing against yourself. Yeah, pretty much. I, I think honestly, that's always been my favorite way to practice. You know what I mean, cause like just give yourself the same set of bags. You know what I mean? Just different color go on either side of the board and yeah. just kind of now do you trash talk yourself when you face yourself like this is Sean important. does? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, no, I have, I have not trash talked myself. Do you find uh, yourself cheering for one side versus the other or like a certain set of bags versus the other? I do play scenarios in my head. Okay. Like I imagine like what, what would happen if I was in, you know, like in, in a national championship match and there's the crowd and like, you know, try and put that pressure on and f- like feel what it would feel like mentally. And sometimes I'm like, wow, I am actually kind of nervous right now. So like, I think it's good practice. <laughs> it is. Um, but uh, like putting yourself in those situations, I feel like really helps. And too, I think I personally think too many ba- too many people are just out there tossing bags, thinking they're going to get better. You know, like I threw a thousand bags. And I'm like, yeah, but were you thinking about every throw, or were you just doing repetitions? I I agree. Yeah, that, and that's why I like playing against myself because I'm not even I'm not good. So like some of the situations I find myself in, yeah. I'm like, oh shit! Like, well, this is more realistic than me just trying to throw slick side down every bag in the hole. And I typically like to play a, a like a faster bag versus a slower bag. 
for me personally, yeah. I tend to struggle if I'm playing with one of those bags, I'm playing a polar opposite type of player. Now, if we're both throwing slow bags or both throwing slick bags, it fit, like, let's, let's, let's roll. Like just let's find out who can pour more bags in the hole or play that dirty game. But if one guy's slick side can dance around, I'm throwing blockers and yeah. I'm missing it left and right. I'm like, oh shit. So I like playing against that. And then it gives me a good sense of, especially like this weekend, we have a, a regional. I've not played in a regional in eight months. Like I've it's not, like I, this year is not, I've not been able to play very much. So I threw last week, I threw a slower set of bags and I threw a faster set of bags. I'm like, are, where are we at now? Like what, what could I maybe not look like an idiot throwing there? So, and I'll do it again this Wednesday and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll try to do something. I mean, we'll, yeah, but something is, uh, that's the right word to use. But at least it's the <laughs> first one. So we, we won't guarantee be like the lowest there's, seed. There's no out. expectations. Yes. Correct. I mean, I have lofty expectations. Oh, I want sorry. one round of four baggers for um, yourself. Yep. Oh, Just well, there give you me one. All I'll right. be a happy boy. Um, so, <laughs> all right. So outside of cornhole, like do what are your other interests? Like what other hobbies do you have? Um, I would say, so we kind of have, um, I say we, my, my, I've been married to my wife for eight years now Congrats. and we have like a little hobby farm and some, a few acres, um, some horses and chickens and, and whatnot. Oh, okay. So I think that takes Outside of work and cornhole, that's probably our biggest time, okay. you know, uh, taker, you know, so we're always cleaning stalls, you know, changing out feed buckets, stuff like that. Um, I don't think, I don't think farm like that kind of life in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And I, I've not explored the city very much, but like, that's not true. to feel like yeah. it at all. Rock Hill, I mean, Rock Hill used to be a small town. It's blown up in probably the last 10 or 15 years. Um, I mean, our first brewery was like four or five years ago. I okay. think. Um, and now there's like eight. Uh, you can tell because you go out there after like, yeah, and like everything's and, fuck, and everything's yeah. closed at like nine o'clock. It's like, what's going on? It's like, oh, normally this is like a sleepy little town kind of thing. And there's people not looking to go out and party. Oh, Rokio hey, puts us on the board. Hi, hot damn. Sorry. Four to one. Sorry, we're, the <laughs> Guardians game is in the, out of the background. It is on. This is game one. We're down four to one. It's the sixth inning. Rokio just uh, took one yard. So. so, Matt, an honest question. How are you and Trey Ryder not best friends? Are you guys like, like, um, yeah, no, I work, I work, we're good friends. Okay. Um, All right. I assume yeah, like much. similar background. You, know, yeah. you guys both went to Clemson in engineering. I know obviously different tracks of engineering, but yeah, no, I mean, we definitely have those, those common similarities and, um, I've spoke with them a bunch and I mean, we don't hang out or anything outside yeah. of Cornhole, but, um, but we're always, I mean, we talk to each other and we're nice and we're, hang, I mean, it's, it's, we're, I would say we're friends, but we don't just hang out. Okay. okay now that you're a pro. That's the way to keep the pro card easily. All right, just befriend them. Is that's the key? Yep, absolutely. So, so I gotta ask. Um, it, I know it's one of the listener questions, and it's probably one of the most popular ones. How do, you you kind of came on my radar, and when you started popping up, I started seeing like your nickname, the janitor. Like, okay, where did this come from? Like, so I didn't know nothing about you. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, maybe it's just a literal like nickname. Maybe like, maybe the guy's a janitor, and I don't know. So how yeah, does maybe that? Maybe if it's like the uh, like what's that Matt Damon movie? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Goodwill Hunting. Yeah, Goodwill yeah, yeah. Hunting level yeah. janitor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, this I man know. is an engineer. Yeah, correct. Yeah, <laughs> correct. So, how did you um, get the nickname? Yeah, I I actually get that a lot. I some people are like, oh, so so you're in the uh, janitorial services. I'm like, no, I prefer custodial. Um, arts. Yeah, custodial arts. <laughs> thank you. Right. Yeah, and there's some people that call me the custodian too. It's it's just a I don't know. It, it started at our local blind draw, which ours is not. Um, not really competitive. Like we, we do it more to have fun and hang okay. out with each other. Um, and there was just this one scenario. This was like, I don't know, two or three years ago where like I had like a level five block and just bags everywhere, level three block one near the hole. And I slung this bag as hard as I could and just collected all of them. And they all went in the hole. And like, people were like, Oh my gosh, you just cleaned that board like a janitor. And it was like, yeah, well, okay, whatever. And then next time, every time I would hit a push shot or a cleanup shot, they be like, here comes the janitor again, cleaning it up. And it was a joke. Like it, it was, I mean, it was just friends saying that. That's the best way um, to come up with a nickname though. Like an organic way. Yeah. Like that's how a nickname sticks. Like you can't like come up with your own nickname. It's very you know true. I mean? But this, yeah, I, I like it. It's, yeah. it's good. So um, are you starting to like embrace it then? Oh, absolutely. I All mean, right. it, it, I have one of my other friends, like he creates logos. Um, he, he did the Rock Hill Cornhole, the silhouette, like of the player on that logo. And so he was like, you know, it'd be funny. He's like, let me, let me give you a little logo and uh, you know, I'll put like a bucket or a mop or something with you yeah. or everything. And so he just, he just did it for free. Cause he, he likes to do it and it's fun. And then he, I started using that logo and um, 
and like I was like, well, I'm I'm posting content too. I'm like, shoot, this is becoming my image and my brand. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's the way. So let's let's kind of transition that way. You came on my radar because you started posting like some really good content out there, and you're out there in consistent content, and it was consistently good. So like, how did you? first start getting into it? Like it, had you had any experience doing content before all this? No, zero content. Um, I usually use Facebook just like to find events and I didn't even have a TikTok. Um, it, I guess it was like a year and a half ago when I started, my wife had a TikTok and she was just watching a bunch of stuff. And like, I would scroll through Facebook and be like, look at this funny video. And she's like, oh yeah, that was on TikTok like three days ago. And I was like, okay. And I was like, well, it's just a bunch of people dancing and like whatever, you yeah. know? And she's like, yeah, but it's pretty cool. I was like, okay. So I downloaded it and I was like, oh, you're right. There's some funny stuff on here. Well, I, I had no intention of posting anything until we were, I was bored one day. We were, we were down at, um, at my in-laws uh, beach house and it, like, there's a pool in the back and everything. And like, we had already been down to the beach like three days in a row. So we were hanging out by the pool and I had nothing to do. I brought my bags and boards and I'm like, I'm just going to set up a camera and like film something real quick. And uh, because I, it was fun. I enjoyed it. So I did that. Posted it, didn't think anything of it. And it got like a thousand views. And I was like, I don't even know a thousand people. And I'm like, I'm following five people, you know, like, yeah. how did this happen? And when I saw that, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this, I could do this. Um, and I was terrible at first. I, I mean, it took me six hours to edit one video. Yeah. <laughs> like it was bad. Um, but I, you know, I've learned some things along the way. Um, and I honestly just do it because I enjoy this game and it's fun to do. And like, I love teaching about it, like teaching how to play. I love it when I get messages like, hey, can you help me with this? Um, and so it just kind of slowly kept building and building and building. And that's that's like kind of how I got my first sponsorship was because of that. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of how it started, I guess. No, I again, like I've been huge on like pushing the need for like pros to do social media stuff. And my biggest thing is like you don't have to be good at it in the beginning. I mean, like the more you do it, the better you're going to get and you're going to get a feel for it. If you look at the stuff we were posting five, six years ago, it was garbage. Like I'm almost embarrassed that like it's still like attached to the page. But like as you keep doing it, like you get better editing, it gets a little bit quicker. So I, how long does it take you to do like a video now? Would you say like to edit it? Um, it depends on like, so now I'm getting, uh, yeah, I'm getting better at it. I would say I have what I call filler videos, which are mostly just rounds of good shots. Yep. Those are not that long. The tutorials, I think, are the ones that get the most views and the people take the most value out of. So I try and make those better um, with just voiceover seem to do good, you know, and, and showing bag placement, different camera angles. That's keeping people's attention, stuff like that. It takes me probably 30 minutes to hit the shots. And then I would say maybe an hour and a half to make the edits, two okay. hours, maybe. Okay. Yeah, and I, again, that's going to only get faster as you keep doing it. But I thought I just watched a video today uh, where you voiced over your round against Cheyenne. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I think that kind of content like that just that goes over so well. You know what I mean? Because people want to hear the thought process. For sure. It's the same I love thing. The like voiceover stuff. why I watch YouTube golf is like <laughs> I want to watch. I want to hear people's thought process of what they're going yeah. through and find out like what I'm not doing. And like, oh, I would have done it this way. Like, clearly I was wrong kind of thing. So yes, like, I think I, those are huge. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think pros, more pros need to do this. I mean, people want to learn from the best in the world. And when I first, like, after I posted, like, three or four videos, I was scrolling through and following a bunch of Cornhole players. I was noticing that, like, all they're doing is posting rounds of a good shot. And, like, honestly, it got boring. And I'm like, this, some, you need to change it up a little bit. Yeah. You know, like, if someone say, oh, another four-bagger. And, like, I would just scroll because I'm like, well, you're going to four-bag. You know? Yeah. It, it, it got, like, the same repetitive thing. And that Correct. that actually is what made me start a tutorial. And the first tutorial video I did where I showed how to do things, like, blew up for, like, 20,000 views in the first, you know, couple of days. And I'm like, okay, this is what people want to see. Yeah. You know? I agree. I agree. Um, So going into your rookie season, we had the first open. You had a very solid performance. I think you went in singles. You took third in your bracket, if I remember correctly. Uh, second. Yeah. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, geez, even even better on, than man. I'm remembering. So, um, <laughs> what was it like going to your first open, like in the pro division, right? Like where you're getting to throw against the best of the best. Now, obviously, other opens previously, you can throw against the best of the best, but or you could throw against guys as bad as us. You know what I mean? So, going into this first one, coming out second, like you had to feel pretty good coming out of that weekend. Yeah, I mean, I. This, I mean, you're right. This, this, this year's opens, right, are different. They're almost like pro brackets yeah. because of the whole pro. League I thing. mean, they are because you guys um, get pro points for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, 
I mean, I knew what to expect because last year I did the elite program. And so I was able to qualify for three out of the four nationals. So I'd actually competed in three nationals last year. Okay. Um, and, you know, had some success. I ended up finishing, I think, top 60 in singles pro standings as an elite player. So, like, I, I last year was the first year I traveled, you know, really went for it. I was out of pocket for three quarters of the year and uh, got that experience. So this year I really felt like I can compete with these players. Um, you know, my, my whole thing, if you ask anybody who knows me, is confidence, nerves. Like, like if, when Matt's confidence, he can beat anybody. But, like, he, you know, he gets a little nervous, and that's, that's all it is. Um, so last year really helped me with that. So this year, you know, I really feel like I'm kind of coming into my stride. I'm like, I, I belong here. You know, I've practiced, put in the work. I can compete with these guys. So going into that open was, you know, it's it's hometown, so I feel comfortable. You know, I, I was just throwing really well all day. Um, got to the king seat, got double dipped. But, like, I think at that time it was 2.15 in the morning oh, yeah, or something. Yeah, it was a long day. <laughs> um, I mean, I was exhausted. But so, I mean, that's no excuse. Everyone else was exhausted, too. Um, but it was – it was definitely one of my best finishes. Very proud of, of how I did. Um, just, just feel like, you know, that endurance needs to be worked on a little bit more. Cause I, I mean, I had a headache going that last game. Like I was ready to go to bed. Yeah. So now you got to start sleep deprivation training. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, right. The, that's to the list. Yeah, of training to the list. You need to start waking up at two 30 in the morning. Just, to become, a, the just become a gamer. Yes. Like, they always seem to sleep deprived. I know I was. Oh yeah. So one of the other big things um, along with the first open was the draft. Did you like going into the draft? I mean, obviously like, again, your name's getting more well-known. Like, were you expecting to be drafted? Um, did you get drafted earlier than you thought? Like, were you happy where you ended up? Yeah. Uh, what there, so a couple of things going on with the draft was one, the chaos of the trading. I had no idea Dude. how, how, these trades go on. Yeah. They um, need to, they need something needs to happen next year because like as some people that are like trying to follow it and cover it, like it was impossible by the time it drafted. And like, <clears throat> even the, even the broadcasters were like kind of talking about like, there were a lot of trades. So like yeah. they posted the order, the draft order. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like what? And trying to follow it. Now I know Wally posted something similar today. It's, it's very, I mean, it's very in depth and like how to try to follow everything down. But um, yeah, it, it's, it seems very chaotic. I mean, I, there's, it seems like they can just trade whenever you want before the draft, during the draft. I mean, so it was, it, I mean, you're right. It was hard to follow. I, I did have, I knew I was going to go in the first round because I had to, a couple of people messaging me like, Hey, if you're there, we're, we're picking you up. Um, like one of them was, uh, Jordan power with Michigan. Okay. I think now, but uh, you know, they, cause he was like, yeah, if you're there, we're going to pick you up. And then he made all those trades and then they, they didn't end up drafting. Yeah. So I was like, okay. So I was like, I'm going seventh. And I was like, Oh, okay. Well now I'm not going seventh. And then I'm like, I don't know where I'm going to go. But then the coasters were there. At, I think they traded up to 11 and uh, Jamie had already told me, he was like, yeah, we're, we're getting you like, you, you're going to be gone. So he ended up picking me at 11th. And when I got back to the table, there was captains like running around like, Hey, we'll give you this for this. We'll do this or this. And I was like, this is, this is madness. Like they would run up to the table and do a trade right before it happened. And like, I mean, we were talking about trading someone and we had 15 seconds on the clock. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I had no idea that was going on. Like I thought it was set in stone. You're just crossing names off a list. You know, it's not like that. <laughs> it makes it kind of more interesting though. It does. But honestly, if they're not going to be structured enough to like tell people what are happening in the moment. Yeah to allow trades like that, to, like during the draft, then I think all trades need to happen prior to the draft. And then it is just set. What I would love if they're going to allow, you can always have like a grace period of two weeks afterwards to shift things with trades after what I, what I, I would love know. to do is if they're going to do allow <laughs> trades and stuff, like even during the draft, have us go out there and cover it. I will live tweet, live post yeah. every fucking trade, keep people up to date we'll on just all be that live stuff. on like, Facebook. That's what they need. The like time. that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> Just putting it out there again, just I think that there's ways that yeah. we can improve upon on this process. But again, like the draft itself is still cool. Like I still like it. You know what I mean? Like it's it's still fun and it's still a fun thing. It's it's a little bit tough to like buy into like one team right now just because the players change so much. But I think eventually that'll probably be a little different. But I think the draft part's a fun thing. Yeah, at least I mean, something different. I want it to be fun. Yeah, for sure. I want it to be more fun than it is right now. So you said before about last year was kind of your first year traveling, you know, a lot of it's out of the pocket. Like how, how do you, tr how do you manage like working full time and like 
the travel schedule and all that kind of stuff. Like, do you do you work from home? Do you work from an office? Um, so we're on a hybrid schedule. Okay. So I'm I'm kind of half half in office, half out. Um, but I, I mean, my work is mostly ninety percent at the computer and only ten percent out in the field. Okay. Um, so the good news is I can work from home, but um, it's difficult. I mean, it's it's real. Last year, after going through all that, like my PTO has dropped in dramatically. Oh, you yeah. know, so so now I'm having to you know put in extra hours late at night, weekends when I'm not playing, working on Saturdays or Sundays, trying to make sure I don't use up my PTO. It's definitely very difficult um to to keep up with and and i can tell i can see why pros are like you know hey i don't know if i'm gonna play this year because i've i can't get the rental schedule or whatever it's tough um the biggest thing for me that i hate is like whenever i mean it's a lot of time away from my wife you know a lot of time sacrificing away and now she's responsible for all this farm animals we have and everything and yeah and and that's that's tough but um but she supports me a ton you know this is it's been a dream of mine to get on ESPN and play. And, and I love being able to travel, see cities, try their food and stuff. And and so I said last year, like, if I'm going to do this, I need to f- just go full, full go on it, full send on it. And, and this is kind of like, kind of pl- plays into the whole sponsorship thing. Cause people are always, it irks me how people think sponsorships are just gifts, you know, that they're not. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like, no, I'm, I'm paying here to go, everything you know I'm, and then because i went out there did well got exposure helped these brands out in return i was able to help them out you know yeah. so like you got to be able to give some you know to get some back and uh it's it's tough but it's manageable i mean you just can't you just can't sit around and watch tv i guess put it that way yeah you know no, you got to be always doing something that's true i mean it's a it's a big ask you know what i mean like like you said you're taking all your a lot of your a significant amount of your vacation time just to go travel and do you know, a hobby professionally right now. You know what I mean, and hopefully it comes to the point where you can, would you ever consider doing it full time? If it made sense financially? Absolutely. Yeah. Why would I not want to do something okay. full time? I mean, yeah. I mean, I didn't uh, know maybe yeah, you loved being an engineer. Maybe that was like your calling and like your, uh, uh, I, I put it this way. Uh, I've always been good at math. So uh, <laughs> I get it. I wouldn't say it's a calling, but it's, you know, I, I do enjoy it, but if you tell me I could play cornhole and make a living off of it, absolutely, I would be playing cornhole. Man, you're see, literally building bridges to bring people together. Yeah, literally. <laughs> <All right>. like, <laughs> literally. I, I mean, I would. I'm gonna play this clip back for my wife because, like, mine would just not be cornhole; it'd just be like doing podcasting stuff. Yeah. But I'm like, see, like, if I could make it financially work, like, it it could um, actually do it. But she's like, but you can not? keep making it work and work full time. I'm like, oh, that's true. Like that that works. But too. can you really? Can you reach your full potential, Sean? No, no exactly. I know that. I know, trust me, I've made the sales pitch before. I'm like, hey, like, let's just take a chance. And But she's like, you have two kids, and no, like, don't be an idiot. So, All right, that. fine. I'll, I'll take the chance. All right. <laughs> so um, I know you're, you're sponsored by BG this year. What's your, what's your bag of choice from them? Um, so last year I threw the regular Wizards um, and broke them into where they were pretty soft. This year I'm throwing Wizard L's uh, with with Colby. So why? Um, I've noticed on some some it, it really depends on the breaking process for me. Some sometimes I can get a bag perfectly right where I want it, right? Okay. And then on other times I can't quite get it in that same realm. So it's either a little too quick or a little too floppy. The L's have a good balance to me of being able to land soft and go hole for hole. So you can throw a 10 PPR, you know, for 30 rounds or you still have the ability to cut and block with them, uh, which I love. I love that kind of hybrid medium speed bag. I basically call it a fast carpet. You know, I mean, I threw when I first started, I was throwing Reynolds Pro Advantage and, you know, the roll bag really came on to play. You know, I think I want to say no Wooten like made it popular because he did it on TV, like for one of those tournaments. Yeah. Um and so everybody was doing it, but then I was, you know, I was getting bags that were hung up on the hole or just kicking left and right. And I was like, I need something that's, a little bit quicker and then the wizards came out. And so I've been throwing those for two or three years now. And then the wizard L's are even a little bit more hole friendly, but still able to cut. And so, uh, so that's kind of my bag of choice for this year. Okay. And the only reason I ask it, cause there was a huge transition last year. Everyone the year before from BG was throwing wizards. Mm-hmm. And then last season, everyone went to the L's. I think the argument could be made that some of those players, their performance went down slightly. Um, just when they went over to the L. So I'm always just interested to see like why people are going to like a 
a lighter fill, especially with a guy like you that has all the shots. Like I feel like more action could sometimes be good, but I guess if you're trying to play hole for hole, you know, sometimes you get those unwanted kicks. That's really it right there is I basically said I can practice more on getting action on a floppier bag, which is what I ended up doing. Okay. Uh, because the wizards were great, right? They have more action, have the bounce, but I'll, I would lose two points because I would get just enough kick on okay. a slide shot or something. I get that. All right. Let me, uh, we got plenty of listener questions here. All right. So Dwayne Timmons wants to know what's the hardest part about being a pro so far outside of the competition. Oh, Hmm. The hardest part, um, it's probably the, the time management and traveling. Okay. Um, you know, like, I mean, it's kind of the same goes along with what you were talking about earlier, but it's just so much time like to, to compete at this level and be good at it. You can't, you can't just show up, you know, you've got to put in the hours and practice and then all the traveling means you're missing time from work if you're not doing this full time. So part of that is, is it's just getting used to how much time it takes. Um, he also wants to know what, is there a location of an event that you're looking forward to attending the most? Um, this, okay. So this is a good friend of mine and I know why he asked this because one of the opens is in, I think, is it Nevada? That's where Las Vegas is, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And he, he, I, he wants to go there. I'm not sure if it's going to be in Las Vegas. Oh, I'm sure it's going to be Las Vegas. I'm every it's ACL event's gonna always be been. In, yeah. Yeah. It'll probably okay. be in Vegas. <laughs> yeah. So that one, uh, I guess, I guess he's already looking forward to. So we, we, okay. we might be taking a, taking a trip. If we there. go to one ACL event this year, it would probably be the Vegas one. I mean, I love Vegas. I know. So I'm going and, in February. So. Yeah, we might. It might just be. It might have to be that one. Might as well. We'll see. We're trying to put our might schedules well. together right now, and I want to fit something ACL in. Um, I know there's one in New York this year, and I don't know where in New York, but if it's somewhere like upstate New York, I mean, we might have to easy do that. I already had two of our Michigan friends reach out and ask if, you know, the lake house. I mean, we could have another on the boys weekend. weekend. Yeah, exactly. We it I think out. it's like July 11th. Then no, no, <laughs> it won't be open in July. I'll, I'll have to look. I, I thought I think that sounded somewhat familiar, but all right. So another question. Okay, I don't know. So I'm assuming this must be some sort of inside. Oh, that's I, now I know. This makes sense. Angel uh, Cameron wants to know: Do you like the Gamecocks? No. Okay, now it makes sense. <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> He's Dabo Sweeney through and through, baby. Uh, Jacob Louder wants to know who has the better roll bag, you or your partner Colby? Ooh, ooh. Um, I I'd, I'd probably say Colby. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, I'll, t- I'll put it this way: I probably have a better roll bag with my bags, and he definitely has a better roll bag with his bags. Fair enough. His are a lot slower, um, and they they definitely grab it real quick and and can pop over. But he's, I would say, he probably hits it more consistently. Wasn't Colby traded like five times during the draft? Yeah, <laughs> the poor yeah, kid. I, joke. I, I was like, either everybody wants you or nobody wants you. That's exactly. I, I couldn't figure it out either. Because he like, should he get was a jersey a from each one. I, I mean, at some point. I'm just saying. Um, but it worked out great for the coasters because I mean, now I've got my pro partner on the team, and we have Kaylee and Pat who are pro partners. So, like, if we do end up playing doubles, you know, we've already got that chemistry there. Mm-hmm. And that was something that we, when we went over all the teams, like seeing chemistry and like links that you could possibly make to make up, you know, your doubles team and still leave some sauce on the, or meat on the bone for singles. Like it's, it all's going to play into factor. Um, Tyler Ebinger wants to know how much of your success do you credit to pernicious IPAs during your cornhole session or season? <laughs> um, you mean these? Yeah. Well, what, are you were, uh, what are you drinking? Good. That's the pernicious. Nice. It's from, it's from wicked weed. It's an IPA. Um, they're based out of Asheville, so they were actually hit pretty hard with that hurricane. Okay, but um, but they they it's easily my favorite beer. I mean, I I drink it every regional. It's, right. uh, you're a, you're a man of your own heart. Good. What you said? We we're IPA guys as well, so you're you have good taste. Oh, nice. Yeah, this one's this one's very drinkable. It does not taste like. You bit into a pine cone, but it still has some bitterness. We've, we've definitely <laughs> had the we've had the pernicious yes um, several times yeah. there. Um, Tom Stranger okay. hooked me up. Oh yeah, that's many right. A time, yeah, that's right. You know. That's right. Uh, let's see. Christian Champagne wants to know what's the best advice you can give someone trying to learn a proper roll bag relating to gaining consistency. Oh, uh, this. So the okay, the roll bag is very tough to learn. 
Um, when I learned it, I really spent like two months just throwing probably 80% roll bags and like 20% slide shots um, just so I could get that muscle memory, the feel. You know, I would correct it every time, um, get that backloaded bag. The problem is it totally screwed up my slide shot. Okay, so that's um, what I was going to ask. Yeah, it took me another two months to get my slide shot actually back. But, you know, I, I kind of made that time sacrifice and I got the muscle memory down. So now I can go 50-50 and I remember what it feels like to throw a good roll bag. Okay. The problem is it sets, it sets you back. I feel like if you try and learn how to do a roll bag while you're mixing in slide shots and other shots, you're not going to really get the feel of it because it, it's an uncomfortable throw. Okay. You know, it, do, it doesn't feel natural. So, like, you almost have to force yourself to be like, okay, that, you know, that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good. Okay, there's a great one. How can I mimic that? Okay. And then just do that over and over and over. And it'll mess up your normal shot, but then you can come back to your normal shot and you've already built that muscle memory. So it sounds like I'm going to be throwing all roll bags this Saturday. Yep. Just Only nothing, roll just bags. No That's slide it. shots. Just trying to roll any for everything. <laughs> so we cut cutting yeah. 90 degrees across the board. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, I don't even know. I don't even know how to answer this. Tim Volcor wants to know Minnesota Lynx or New York Liberty. <laughs> are, are those are those women's basketball teams? Yeah, Is that the good. WNBA yes, yes. finals? Going I on guess. Right I, I, oh, I mean, oh, I don't. Who are, give me the uh, Lynx are, all day? Yeah, Clark, Lynx, is, I guess. is Kaylin Clark on one of those teams? No, she's not. She's, she's on, on the, the Fever. Yeah, the Fever. That's the only team I pretty much know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so she in the working. Chicago. And sky. I just I'm an anti like New York sports person. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah, screw Fuck New York. Liberty. You don't no need links. another championship for anything. Yeah, correct. As we're down four to one here in the seventh right. inning. Sean, you were the one that came over so hopeful. I know. I know. Down well, four nothing. He's matter. like, hey, it's only game one. It is. It is only. <laughs> All right. So Tornado, he wants to know who are your toughest five opponents? Is there someone you haven't beaten yet that's on your radar? And who's your favorite person to kind of beat up on the boards? Hmm. Okay. Um, I think the toughest or the person I want to beat the most is always the person that I hear talk trash about me behind my back, you know, like okay. nice yeah, yeah. my face. Yeah. And then they're saying, Oh, he's, he's not that good, whatever. Um, there's not any specific person, but you know, there's always, there's always people out there like that. So I, you know, in my mind secretly want to beat them. Um, so I'm not going to, I won't make you say who it is. We want there's clearly, names, there's Matt. clearly somebody that's done yeah, it before. I want a name. <laughs> no, there's, no, I mean, it, there's always people. I, I put that. I won't name any names, but they know who they are. Um, and they know Should we just throw it. some out in wild speculation? And you just nod. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my video cut out. Whoops. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. <laughs> oh, you just said it. Yeah, it's so weird. Um, what was the, what was the other one? The, so, who uh, are like your first... t- your um, top five like toughest opponents? You would say toughest. Um, I think like. Just probably it's a little recency bias, but like Alex Rawls is always super tough because he's got like the best bag placement in the game. I would agree. Yes. Um, you know, yeah, he'll he'll make you think about shots. He'll back block a lot, you know, which a lot of people either go through it or airmail or, or roll around it. So you're used to collecting a shot, but he'll back block and make you do something. That that's always really tough. Um Cheyenne is super tough because she just doesn't miss. And even if you put a, a block in there, she just goes right through it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think the last, uh, Brandon Patterson just seems to have my number. I played him in elite last year, like two or three times. Okay. And he beat me every time. Okay. Um, and there's nothing fancy about his game. It's just very consistent. Um, it's kind of similar to Alex a little bit. He'll go hole for hole for hole. And if you set a block, he'll back block behind you. And then okay. you're like forced to hit a big shot. Okay. Um, so I think, I guess it's, it's basically people who play, smart selective shots i think are, are always tough to beat okay all right um let's see so he'd have no problem with us then <laughs> our our rule of thumb is just shoot it no matter what um one, I, I like it <laughs> one of my favorite dudes chris kingsbury wants to know mop or broom broom okay broom, broom definitely free. yeah i don't even i mean the last mop i picked up was maybe in high school i don't know I mean, when we really think about a mop, does it really clean much, though? Like, it'll get some stuff off the ground, but, like, at the end of the day, you're just pushing bacteria around. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, Matt Boatman, he has a few questions with the last one I love. Who is your dream doubles partner? Oh, I don't know about dream. Um, 
but someone who I've there's there's a couple of people I've I would love playing with. Um, one of them was he was from our area. He was a pro for five years, but he's not a pro this year. He he stepped away to for personal reasons, and you know he's he's moving on with his life, I guess. But it's Jordan Kimbrell was, was one. Um, yeah, he was just a super nice dude. You dude know, we super played a underrated. So under. I, I'm gonna say it. Like I thought going into last season, I expected more out of him and Rogier. Like I thought they were gonna be a sneaky, really good team, mm-hmm. and they they had a solid season, but it wasn't. I don't think quite up to a lot of people's expectations. Yeah, I mean they they were they always finished like top thirty in doubles. Yeah. I mean it just was like you just didn't see him on TV. You know yeah. they were they always requalified. They were really good. Um, but he he's got a great attitude. He's re- he's really good, and he kind of taught me a little bit on how to play. He was at our local blind draw for for years. Okay. Um, gave me a couple sets of bags. So he he's always been a good influence for me. Um, uh, Jordan Powers another one. He just recently moved down to our area, yeah. like last year, and we've played like four tournaments together okay. and we've never lost yet. Oh, so nice. Okay. I tried to hint that I was like, Hey, you're looking for a partner, you know, uh, yeah, we've yeah. never lost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think he'd be fun to play with. And I think a lot of people don't really know who he is. Like I, I mean, I'll be honest. I kind of thought he was a jerk when I saw him on TV. Right. Cause he's Correct. yelling, he's, he's chatting. Um, and then I talked to him like after the the tournament was done and the dude is so nice and very genuine, like yes. just not what you would expect. He's um, like a, he's like a yes, sir. No ma'am. Like super humble, like very mild mannered. Like mm-hmm. you would say, like you would not expect yeah. him to go crazy. I, I, it's the same thing. He's one of our favorite dudes. Like he gets a bad rap. If you only see him play on broadcasts, you won't, you won't have a full understanding of who the real dude is now on the court. Again, that's what makes sometimes like great athletes though. Yeah. But here you can turn had, it on and turn it off. He already had some chips stacked against him because he was from Michigan. Yeah, All right. So true. once people yeah. start to forget about that, maybe his image will improve. Yeah, that's very right? true. That's true. That's true. Sorry, Jeremy. I love you. I love this question. I want us to answer this too. Okay. Okay. Britt Moore. If the ACL has a villain, who is it? Ooh. I think there's an obvious, easy answer. Yeah, but I'm not going to take that route because it's. I think it's too easy. I, know, I think Anthony Ione. No, I think. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's the obvious? I think who's the, the obvious, obvious one would be Matt Guy, right? Just because he's come in, you know, he's kind of he's considered the goat. He kind of almost embraced like that bad guy role a little bit. Then he partnered up with Jamie Graham and like had the super team. I don't know. I just feel like he would have been like an obvious target. I mean, Dude. we're talking. You're talking three, four years ago, yeah, but. Nowadays, well, now he's like Papa Matt guy with like this team of like yeah. twenty youngsters. We're gonna like call it Matt's daycare. Like you can't call them the Kentucky Colonels anymore. Just like they're opening a daycare. That's very year. true. So very um, true. All right, so villains. All right, I, I'm gonna take a second here. I need to really think about who would play a good villain. You know who wants to be the villain? Okay, I'm interested in who you said. Jacob Trzinski. Dude, I got yeah. I man. think he wants to be. I can see that, that. guy, and. We might see it this year. We, who knows? But he has enough of like, yeah, he has enough of like the chip on his shoulder. Yeah, and he like really, I mean, the Northeast. Like, I don't give a fuck what you say. Ex- like, I don't care if people like me. Exactly. Yeah, yeah like, I, that's actually a really good answer. I like that a lot, and I, I so much that I just forgot who was in my head. I'm really, I'm gonna call, <laughs> oh, actually, okay, Matt, do you have somebody? I well, the first thing that came to my head was Jeremiah, but I don't. I mean, he also, I think he's very likable and people like marketable and all that, but yeah. like. I've spoken maybe two words to him and uh, I see like a lot of the trash talk and banner back and forth. Yeah. But like at first I thought he was serious and I'm like, now I think he's just doing it for like a show. I can't oh, tell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's very, he's, I wouldn't say he's like Jordan power because like, he's definitely more outgoing off the boards, but he's still like a super down to earth, like just nice guy. But when you put him on the okay. boards, we're good buddies with them. Yeah. But if I'm playing against him, he's going to be chirping the entire the fucking time. time, you know? And I love, and I love that. Like, I think the game needs that kind of stuff, but I could definitely see where he could go the villain route and probably play it very well. He could. And could did you think of the one yeah, that was I on think, the tip of so your the, tongue? I think just if I'm picture, like I can almost picture, and I don't know why, like obviously you don't play cornhole in like a suit and stuff, yeah. but I feel like he could play like a movie villain and it might be a little surprising, but I feel like he has the face for it. Give me Shermer Horn. I don't know why. I just feel like he could play a very he could play a villain if he wanted to. So I think little, of I think of him more as like the the like sidekick driver for like the superhero or something. I don't know, like the funny banter guy. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I just keep. I can picture. Now him you as say being like suit supervillain. I'm thinking more like Jimmy Humans. 
That's true. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Like he could, he's that inconspicuous guy that all of a sudden, like else? you just who don't know Lex good... Luthor style, just cooking up some crazy stuff. You know, who else, you know, who else I think plotting. honestly exactly. could be a great villain and going full on the other end of the spectrum. How about Miranda Coy? Yeah, she could. She's actually. another one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like on the boards, like she's not nice. You know what I mean? Like she's mm-hmm. got the scowl on her face off the board. She's sweetheart. But, you know, like on the boards, though, if that's what we're really judging it, I mean, yeah. she could play a villain for sure. And I don't think she gives one fuck. She's at all. Genuinely a sufferer of RBF, though. So yes. let's not forget that. people. She it is a struggle. She knows. Um, all right. So let's see. All right. Samuel Martinez, one of our favorite dudes. He said, name a player you would love to see start posting more content on their social media. Every player in the top 50 rankings. Yeah. Um, Bingo. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, ser- I mean, yeah, I think these top pros need to be doing more of it, to be honest. I mean, they, I have seen a lot of in the last year. I think I've seen more, more posts and more content, but a hundred percent. I mean, yes. like, yeah, like I said earlier, though, like any amateur wants to see stuff from the best players in the world. You know, they want to see their their thought process, their practice routine, you know, behind the scenes. They, they see this stuff on TV. They want to know how you got there. Um, yeah. I think so, it, I think it gets fun too. It can get addicting. Like once you start doing it and start getting good, like it yeah. is fun. And then I don't care what anyone says when when you get a thousand views, you know what I mean? And like that that fires you up. You're like, all right, at least it, it seemed like it was worth my time. You know, at least enough people are starting to get out and see it. So like we're at a point now yeah. where I know it's a good video or a bad video about ten minutes in. I can tell right away yeah. if it's gonna fly off the board. Yeah, you know I mean if it's not, then oh well. Then now we know. Okay, like let's try not to do that type of content and more towards this stuff. What we need yeah. or we need more video interactions of you guys don't talk enough during games. That's true. I want to do more bad lip reading. I think that there is so much like that was such a huge hit, but like there's not enough like interactions yeah. between like teammates and stuff in during the game. So I need to find the right clip and start. We got to start firing that back with that. We can we can try, man. Or just have our I own think the no headphones is going to help with that. Hopefully. Yes, so, I yes. think so. I think so. Um, what was one of the where was it? Uh who asked that question? Okay. What's your go-to playlist during a game? Now, obviously, like, the no headphones and stuff, but if you were wearing headphones, what was your go-to playlist? Like, who did you like listening to? Yeah, actually, I wore headphones all last year, so um, I definitely would blast the music, but it is it is all over the place. Okay. Um, any song that, like, just makes me feel good in the moment, whether it's the beat or, you know, just I played that song during a great time we have with the friends, you know, whatever – so I actually, I actually saw that question, so I wrote down four because Please. I was like, these four are <laughs> yes. coming back. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. Um, and th- and they're a little bit, they're all different. But one is "Beautiful Things" by Benson Boone. Okay. You know, when that hits, it's like, I don't know, just I mean, feeling great. Good you vibes. Know? Yeah. Um, then you know you get kind of the in in the zone moment, and so I have Eminem, I have "Lose Yourself," and then "Till I Collapse." Um, Taylor Swift. <laughs> this is where it changes up a bit. All right. Taylor Swift, I don't know what it is. I mean, I've liked her, all her her stuff for a while, but like I'll play the man and ready for it. And then I'll switch over to like country and I'll play Stick Season by uh Noah Kahan. Or oh. K is it K or Kahan? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, how, so I mean, honestly, I heard that how old are you? Uh 32. Okay. All right. So you grew up with Taylor Swift. It's okay. You're allowed to. Oh yeah. The, the Fearless album in high school? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was formative. <laughs> I we get it. Oh, it's yeah. okay. Yeah, you know it's okay. Everyone knows at least one song. It's all good. What are, what would your two songs be? I mean, uh, if you only got two, if I only got two, like something that's gonna like fire you up, like that one doesn't. Have no, to- I actually have two songs. I'm I'm there with him though. I like going to a happy place when I'm listening to okay. music. So like, yeah, I would go that route, and I'd I'd have to go another day in paradise. Okay. Um, by Charlie. Um, yeah. And then, man, I mean, it's it's gonna sound weird because it's not a super popular song, but there's a song called "Beautiful Day" by Revolution, and I love that song. Okay, every time I hear it, it puts a smile on my face. Oh yeah, all right, I like that. All right, do you have a yeah. tear talk or anything? You know, actually, I I had one quick question. Oh yeah, go ahead, yeah, shoot it. You have farm animals. Um, oh yeah, they're not listening to this right now. I hope. <laughs> no. Oh, they are in. <laughs> so what's your what's your favorite ones like what, what if which well, animal is your favorite there's always a favorite um so i'd say out of the horses it's aj um 
He's an Appaloosa thoroughbred cross. He's 20. Oh, my wife's going to kill me. I want to say 24. I can't remember exactly how old. Okay. So he, he's getting up there, but he is just a goofy personality. Um, I mean, they're, they can be just like big dogs. So, I mean, except they're <laughs> scares the shit out pounds. of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I can't uh, get my dog to not jump. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, it is a little scary when they are galloping full speed to come get dinner. You kind of throw your hands up and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, but then out of our chickens, it's probably a uh, lady McPeck. She is just lady the, the most, and, but like, she is the most ambitious. She gets on the little swing me, we made. She comes running over to you for food. She's, she's also very, very friendly. So are chickens fun? Cause like I work with a bunch of people who all have chickens Yeah, and I mean, all they talk about are their chickens and the type of chickens that they have. And they're like, there's, they're great pets. And they keep trying to convince me like, you should get them for your kids. I'm like, I have a dog that will eat anything that moves. <laughs> so like that can't happen until. And we also have like the Metro parks right by us. So coyotes are yeah, rampant around just, us as well. Yeah. So. And I also live in like in like suburbia. You know what I mean? Like I feel yeah. like it, even though there is a house in our development that has chickens. Yeah. I mean, you're allowed to have them in Berea. It's just, uh, I don't know. It seems like, a, is it a lot of work either. like having chickens? It can be if you, if you, I mean, it can be, but like being the engineer I am, I, you know, rigged a couple of, automatic food stuff and water okay. things. So I only have to go out there like once a week, but uh, I mean, getting fresh eggs every day is super nice. Oh I mean, yeah. And you know, it's, it makes you eat a little healthier sometimes. You don't have, you know, you're eating eggs every, every morning. Um, I, I love it. And they're not, they're not that bad. I mean, it, now if you don't do some of that stuff and you have to go change the water and feed every day, it, it could get tiring. Um, but, but I don't think they're that bad. Okay. That's interesting. Would you recommend people, like if you had to recommend like one animal for people to like to get, would it be chickens? Cause like they're more manageable. Like, I mean, I've, I, it's gotta be somewhat rewarding to have a horse, right? It's kind of, it's like a little bit of a status thing too, right? Like I have a fucking horse. Like how many people can say <laughs> that? <laughs> yeah, we've got, we got, well, so we got three of them, but they're my, my wife rides and I basically just help take care of them. Okay. Um, she, she is the, she competed in college at Clemson on, on their eventing team. So she's, oh, she's sure. been riding horses for a while. Okay. Um, but they're, they probably are the most work. Um, I mean, honestly, a, a cat, I, I mean, oh. my cat is sitting around here doing nothing, you oh, know, yeah. sleeping all day and eating. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think chickens are great, especially for kids. Like it's something you can learn to take care of a little responsibility. And then when they get older, you know, you can, you can give them away to someone who, who can take care of them more. You yeah. know, like if you got a rooster and you're in suburbia and it's too loud or something, um, there's plenty of people that will take them away okay. for free. Fair enough. You have a tear talk. Like um, you know, I couldn't really think of one, but now that, um, I know that you're a, a beer drinker, can we just do a tear talk of like your favorite IPAs? Yeah. Locals sure. are allowed, you know? Oh yeah. Just get some names Locals out are, there. are allowed? Oh, Encouraged. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, pernicious from wicked weed is, is number one on my list. That's, that's like my go-to. Um, the next two are probably between the Juicy J, um, which is – I'm blanking on the brewery right now. Um, and then Mountain Candy by Sycamore Brewing. Okay. okay. I think we've had that. I think I've had that one yeah, before. It yeah. sounds familiar. It does sound familiar. Juicy J sounds familiar too though. I mean I think they're – I'm just – I don't know if I'm thinking of Juice Jolt Maybe or not. That's why. I might be thinking of that one. It's Legion Brewing. Okay. Legion. I don't know why it's it sounded familiar, but yeah. again, there's been a bunch that if drank so many beers, it's hard I, to it's keep track. It really has, yes, correct. But those ones stick out for you. Yeah, those are like if I see those on 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 the tap for wherever we are, I'm those are my go tos. Okay. Nice. How about you, Sean? Um, I'm a huge fan of Southern Tier, the hazy juicy that they had. Is it like the fog? Yeah. Two X. Uh, no, what was the two X haze? No, wasn't it the it was the, uh, the orange can. Which one's like the orange and black hand? Oh, the 2X Citrus. Yeah, the Citrus. Okay. I was a big fan of that. Um, if we're talking, like, it doesn't have to be IPAs and stuff. I'm still a sucker for a Dortmunder from Great Lakes. We're doing IPAs Oh, right we're just now, doing Sean? IPAs? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I really like Elvis Juice. Yeah. No, really I'm, like I'm Elvis there. Juice um, from that Sprudog. Summer can. No, uh, no. Yeah, that is yeah, Sprudog. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. Um there was one that I, I'm blanking out. It was, uh, I think it's, I think it was the orange Julius or Julius. I think it's what it was. Julius. And it's, um, from green 
tree. Like green, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Green you know what I'm talking about? Green, like we yeah. got. Yeah. yeah. So that that was I think probably was, one of the, my yeah, favorite that, that I've ever bad. had. And I can't. I, I'm blanking out. But is that's where it was for Green Tree. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's green what it was tree, called. Green. Yeah. Nice. So what's nice. yours? Uh, I mean, I, I think my tried and true like every restaurant I go into, if they have an IPA on draft, it's usually Truth, and I do love Ryan Geist's Truth. Okay. So I will go with Truth. On the Cincinnati, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I will take any derivative of that as well. The Juicy Truth is probably my favorite one. <laughs> okay. Um, it's hard to find though. It's not everywhere. Yeah, I gotcha. Um, <clears throat> then my favorite um, Southern tier beer is the 2X um, Haze. Love it. Um, but then oh, yeah. just above that is the Lake Shore Fog by Southern Tier as well. That's true. It's really good. Another fantastic oh, Juicy yeah, Haze. Yeah. yeah. Is one of the best seasonal though, so can't get a year round. Got to get it when you can. Oh yeah, what did you um? Just random question. What did you think about like all the like the rule changes and stuff? So obviously you were in the elite division last year. Step over rule was still a thing. Um, I don't think that ever really affected you at all. Like, were you happy that they established this rule where people can't step over? Did it not really bother you? I didn't really mind too much. I mean, I'm kind of. Do what you want to do. You know, I'm not real. I'm not real stickler on these rules, I guess. Yeah. Um, I mean, I see both sides of it. It's like there should just, you know, it should be standard across everywhere where you just you can't cross that line. But then, you know, some people are like, hey, you take away those big, exciting shots. If you can get someone who can step over and hit a big push or something. Yeah. Um, I don't really mind either way. It didn't bother me. I actually stepped when I first started for like the first two or three years, but I would step back. And okay. so I never actually crossed the line. I got anyway. you. OK, I got you. Um, Last year's experience in the elite program, right? I think there's a lot of um, people that are you know, right on the border of like, do I want to like pay the $500, go through the elite program? What were your overall thought experience going through the elite program? Did you think it was worth it? Yeah. I mean, it, it was a big investment, right? I think it was like $500 and it, I yeah. guess it, it might st- still be that same price, but um, it, it was one of those things where, Again, I kind of just said, I'm going to go for it. So I, I ended up doing it, but um, it was like, you should, I think in my opinion, you should only be doing elite if you are 100% committed to becoming a pro. Okay. There's no reason to do elite. Like if you want to play bar tournaments in advance, you just want to compete and go out to opens and have, you know, a good time competing. There's no reason to do elite. Um, and even then, if you do it, like you still have to perform really well. Like, you know, there was only... I want to say a two, like a one doubles team and two individuals that qualified through the elite program. Um, but it does give you more chances to qualify. You know, they changed the rules this year. Last year, you could finish in the top 24 of open standings, right? And as long as you were an elite, you were, you could qualify. Yeah. They, you know, they kind of got rid of that this year. But it's, it's essentially, it's like, if you have a goal of becoming pro and you think you have a chance and you're going to travel, yes, you kind of have to do it, I feel like. Okay. Um, but if But if you're not, if, and the other side of that is like, you want to do a small chance of becoming a pro, just save the money and wait till the qualifier at the end of the year, you know, and then go that route. Yeah. Um, That's true. So this year they're making a big change, right? So after the end of the season, they're cutting down the pro field to a hundred players. Um, just general. I, and I know you like your newer pro rookie and everything. Do you, do you think that for the overall, like good of like the pro division, like going to a hundred is better or do you think that having a larger pro field, like you would prefer a larger pro field? No, I think going smaller is better. Okay. I mean, I think that my, I think the goal of most of the players is to turn this into something they could make a living off of. Yeah. And if you, if you want to do that, their biggest complaint right now is there's not enough money in the sport. So, you know, one way is to shrink the pro, pro field. Hopefully that means more money can be allocated to some of these players. But you still need to draw in outside sponsors. You know, you can't all rely on the bag manufacturers. Um, you, it'd be nice to have like a, a big sponsor come in. You know, most of my sponsors are, you know, the main one is the, is, the, is the BG. But then I have some local sponsors who are, you know, some of those people are just people who are friends of mine who support me. You know, they don't even care about getting the revenue back. Um, but like turn, turning that field down to 100, I think, is one step to help to help do that. Um, it, it kind of stinks because I finally got pro and now it's like, oh, <laughs> I, it is, we're going, whoop. Yeah, correct. <laughs> correct. Time to um, shake it down. So I don't know. I think it definitely makes it the elite of the elite and I'm, that's probably what it should be. So I think, yeah, I'm for, I'm for shrinking it down. 
do you ha- do you have like expectations going into the season, like certain goals that you have set in place for yourself? Yeah, I mean, my so last year my goal was just become pro. I want to do it for one year and see how it goes. Okay. Well, I kind of I kind of almost did it last year because I went to every national, you yeah. know. <laughs> so like I had already traveled um, and played against all these players. I just didn't have that pro status, but like I got the experience of doing it. And so this year I've got I've got the um, rookie pro right now, but. I think, you know, my goal is just to requalify again, especially now that they're turning it down to 100. Okay. And if I play like I did last year, I should be able to do that. But, you know, again, I, I was throwing good during those tournaments, and anybody can win on any given day. Yeah, for sure. And then um, one more question, like going back to teams. Obviously, they're, they're changing format this year, which I'm kind of excited about. They're gone are the days where we're having seven doubles matches, right? So now they're having two singles, they're having a doubles, they're having a tandem, and then crew cup. If yeah. you had your choice, what would you prefer to play? I enjoy the camaraderie of playing with people. So I would say Crew Cup is definitely the most fun okay. and exciting. People get to talk in, then doubles. The problem is I think I'm a better singles player. Okay. <laughs> um, I've had most of my success in singles. But, like, you know, on our team, uh, we've got Jamie Graham and Eric Davis, and they are excellent singles players. Yeah. And you know, and I've already got my partner on the team. So like it's shaping up to look like those two guys will play singles. You know, me and Colby probably will partner up. Uh, Kaylee and Pat will probably partner up and then we'll form a crew. I'm guessing, but like, we'll probably try it out and switch it around. If it doesn't work, you know, figure out something. I'm excited to see how tandem will work. So I was just thinking, like, I think honestly, that to me, that that's the most almost interesting. be like, you can treat it like singles. I mean, you got to go you throw on each side of the board, bags. just only two bags at a time. Yeah, correct. And again, with guys like you and Colby are already partners, you throw yeah. a similar game style. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like it would be, that could kind of fit well going to like a tandem. Yeah. And like, can you, you can like switch your rotation, right? Like you don't have to throw one and then rotate. I and would then. love to know that. I don't know. I, I would imagine you, as long as like you just, Actually, I don't know. Like, I could you throw two bags difference. in a row? Like, yeah, I do you think have that's to be the difference between like the crew cup and tandem is like you can go like one, two, and then swap. Yeah. So I think you can. I don't think there's any set order that you have to throw in for tandem. Well, it's just like when you're golfing. Like if you're playing like a two man scramble. <laughs> yeah. Like you gotta yeah. switch it up sometimes. Yeah. Like you know, the if order it's not matters. Working, yeah, correct. It really doesn't. But like you know, just mentally, sometimes yeah. I want to be first. Like I want to throw it at open board. To me, I would do anything I could not to throw on an open board. And sometimes like, when just you're give me feeling something it, to aim at on the board kind of thing. But then sometimes yeah. when you feel it, you just switch it up and be like, doesn't matter who goes first. We're both making them. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. It'd be just as detrimental. No. That is very true. That is very true. So are you, um, just, I mean, random question. Are you a, a comedic movie fan? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, like, do you consider yourself a movie buff? Oh, you're going to ask me the question? I like this. Oh, man. I've watched a lot of movies. I've enjoyed a lot of movies. Okay. I, that, that, right, counts. You know, right. that counts. That's that's good and well because you are the, I'm assuming you're the lost Wilson brother. So I want to know what's your favorite Luke Wilson movie and what's your favorite Owen Wilson movie. That is kind of oh true. Gosh. Like, that is weird. Like, yeah, now that you said that, I'm like, oh, shit. Right? Uh, Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Now, I feel like I need to like, Google and find out which movies he was in because I can't, I can't remember. So I mean oh. I can I can start with this one. Oh, this is easy. Is it's old Slam school, book. right? Yeah, old school. Old for school. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That'd obviously be, that'd be Luke. For Luke. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mine is not actually for Luke. For Luke, mine is Idiocracy. Okay, yeah, I love yeah. that. Movie. I've only seen that once or twice it's, though. It's uh, it's been a, it's been a minute since I've seen it. Stands the test of time. Okay. Still very funny. Okay. Okay. And my Ooh. Owen Wilson um, movie is actually uh, the Internship. That oh, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, you could take that. There's. We can we can share movies in this one because the internship is absolutely hilarious. Mine's, I love that mine's movie. Wedding Crasher, and that's a close second, but without doubt, yeah. I mean, internship oh, though too. is yeah. goddamn hilarious. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, you put a Wilson brother with Vince Vaughn, and it just works. It's gonna out. be magic. It's just, it it's is gonna, gonna be, be magic. magic. <laughs> Absolutely. So I we know you're sponsored by BG. Uh, do you have any sponsors you want to shout out? Uh yeah. Um, Gosh, let me think. So Bust You Up Cornhole has been supporting me since basically last year um, when I started kind of traveling. Um, did I lose you guys? You guys froze on my screen. No, sorry. Yeah, I don't know why. It's, oh. Yeah, it's uh, our screen is okay. frozen right now, too. But like, can you, as long as you can hear us, yeah. I don't know what's going on. You're moving so. on our screen. So. Yeah, you're good. Sweet. Um, uh, Carolina Collision, which is a local sponsor here. They, they kind of help us with our, our blind draws and regionals. They've, okay. been, they've been just loyal, loyal supporters for me and just want to see. 
see this game grow. So thank you. Thank you guys to them. Um, JTB Photography is a new one this year for, for me. Um, Cornhole Coffee is a new one, both brand reps for them. Um, and then Better All has been uh, just a new sponsor for me this year, too, as well. So thank you guys for all, all that you do. Hell yeah. Of we, uh, we met the owner of Bust You Up at Spencer's. Because, like, they're one of those brands that, like, I've known about forever, but, like, I never got, like, to put a face, like, yeah, to, so like, they, the actual yeah. company kind of thing. So really nice guy. Um, and we got to talk to him for, for yeah. a little bit. Because his booth was not very far from where we were stationed with uh, Airwolf Athletics. Very true. Like kind of okay. right, down, right down the brand. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell. Yeah, I don't know. Our it's video uh, right it's not letting us kick it back on either. But Is the camera still on? Yeah, cameras. We can see ourselves right there. Oh, yeah, that's true. So. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Was, Who knows? Anyways, so if you're watching this on Patreon, we apologize. I don't know what the hell just happened to the camera, but you can still see Matt, and he looks great. So that's all this stuff. And he's got the bust you up cornhole boards in the background. So pretty good stuff. So there we go. Hell, yeah. Um, so I, thank you very much for joining, man. This is this was awesome. Um, you have fans out of us, you know what I mean? Like, I, I love your content. I think you're, you're absolutely killing it. If anyone's looking for kind of like a blueprint of like just stuff to do. And I think there's a little bit of when you're thinking about like, oh, I need to start doing content. Don't worry about if someone's already done it. Exactly. There's so much content there. Yeah. It's a copycat world out there. It's okay. You know what I mean? You can find a recipe that works and just stick with it mm-hmm. and just, and try to have fun with it. I think it's the, the best thing. Like if you take it too seriously, it doesn't come out. That's why 99% of the stuff we post is what makes us laugh. Like I don't exactly. really care what anyone else thinks, but if we think it's funny, I'm going to post it. And luckily that most of the people that listen to the show also think sometimes it gets us in trouble. That's fine. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes. Unless your name is, uh, what was his name? Uh, Bacon Kevin. Yes. And I can't like, so you, if you already listened to our part of the episode, you'll hear me absolutely annihilate this poor gentleman from Michigan. But um, this is what happens when you come attacking me. Don't come too close. Don't come too close. <laughs> so, uh, Matt, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we'll, ha- after you win a national or something, we'll have you come back on and we'll talk about that experience and stuff. That sounds great. Hell yeah. All yeah. right, so we'll have you hang on just for a minute. We'll let the folks go at home. But as always, we hope you throw it straight. And it's nothing but four baggers from here on out. Cornhole it. Later.